back to another episode of Collector's Quest. I'm Tyler here with Johnny. Johnny, what's going on? You got any uh, got any updates for us? Yeah, hey, uh, you know, everyone loves theme park talk. So went to to uh, Universal here in Southern California and got to see Mario Land. That was pretty cool. Uh, it's a lot more compact than I even realized. I thought it was going to be kind of small, but it was even smaller than that. Though everything in it is very large, uh, tall structures and everything. And the force perspective is good. So you really feel immersed, but also, uh, everybody in the world is still trying to go there and it's summer. So it was very crowded in there. Um, but it was cool. Everything looked really neat. So this is, this isn't a theme park. It's just like an area of a theme park. Yes. It's a land in the theme park. All right. I'm, that's that's so strange just because like I'm thinking of like areas in theme parks and like at Universal in Orlando, there's like a Dr. Seuss world. And it's like, OK, Dr. Seuss is pretty big, but like Nintendo could totally have their own theme park. And if they do in Japan. Are they getting their own theme park in Japan? It um, seems no, too big. It, it's no, it's it's got a small one in in the Japanese Universal. Oh. And then they're building a bigger one. In the Florida Universal, because Florida has more land, and they're building it in Epic, and that will have room for expansions. Um, okay. I, I think when they decided on this, they weren't exactly sure how big it was going to be. Like, they knew video games were popular, Mario was popular, but it's a thing that's been going on for so long. What kind of weight does it really carry? And um, now you have every fourth grader in the world who can sing Peaches, and uh, so, yeah. They were like, oh, that was super big, and the movie did really well, and we should invest more into this. So Orlando will probably get an expansion. I don't see how they expand the SoCal one. Uh, Orlando, I think, is opening with two rides instead of the one that um, we have. But One yeah, ride? Uh, it, there's one ride in Super Mario Land? There's one, and it's it's a Mario Kart ride. And uh, they've got, like, some bracelets, and they've, the, the land has... Uh, it's interactive, so you can go and do stuff, and they've got an excellent cafe that is well-themed, and the food is very interesting and all that. But, uh, yeah, it's not it's not a, uh, it's not big. All right. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, I guess, like, Star Wars, it took 40 years for them to get, like, the Galaxy's Edge, whatever, and that's got, like, two rides. And you would think that Star Wars is big enough to have its own park, but I guess it's super risky to, like, you think a theme park will be there for decades. Like, we don't know how long the enduring popularity of Star Wars Nintendo will be. As as unendure like they seem like things that could never possibly go away, but when it comes to investing like billions of dollars into a, a theme park, you probably don't want to do it on a pop culture thing unless you're uh, fucking I mean, Disney. Yeah. Like, yes. Uh, but like look at Avatar Land. Avatar Land they did a great job with, right? But who gives a shit about Avatar? I can't even believe they made that a land. Like, did James Cameron jump in there and like strong on arm them and like was it in a contract or something because the the ride in the area look really cool but also avatar who gives a shit and it's not like avatar the last airbender which i would think would be a better idea we're, we're talking like the navi and blue aliens uh just a really insipid movie i'm sorry if you like it i just i'm, I'm not it's not like terrible but i am it it was completely overrated tyler it's a movie that is entirely overrated Johnny, everyone was like, oh, Avatar had no cultural impact. And then Avatar 2 came out and made like $3 billion. So how's that for I cultural understand. impact, you stupid assholes? I've never seen the Avatar movies, so I don't have They any. are, it's like, it's fine. It's fine until it's not. And like, look, uh, spoilers, if you haven't seen the first Avatar, you know, the movie that's made the most money ever. There is, look, it's got two things I dislike in it. It's got a mech. Okay, Tyler, it's got a human jumps into a mech. To fight an alien. Uh, hey, James Cameron, I think I've seen this from you before. Just saying. Um, but that then in the mech, the guy wields a knife, Tyler. The mech has a giant knife. I mean, that stuff's cool, Do you though. No, like, that is you, so stupid. You used to watch that like Gundam so Wing or Evangelion, and they have like these little it's energy all knives stupid. Stuff, This is why cool. mechs are stupid. No, mechs are just this cool. is why mechs are giant dumb. robots. Robots are cool. No. If you saw a robot knife no. fight, you'd be like, hell yeah, if robot they're not knife fight. Robots. Why not? They're not robots. Robots would just like, Transformers are cooler than mechs. Mechs are stupid. Just. Are you telling me that mechs. in the Transformer movie where there's like people hanging out with Transformers that there's never a point where a person gets inside a Transformer like they're a Power Ranger? Yeah, but they're not fucking driving it. Look, I'm just saying, if you're in a mech, Okay, you're you're in a mech. You don't need 
to wield a knife. Okay? That's... <sighs> All right. It's a, I'm going to so talk stupid. about another movie I haven't seen, but Pacific Rim is in one of these stupid... Fine big kaiju stupid robot movies right but it's just like because robots are big dumb and fun so why not right but they but they like leaned into that they like it was completely non-serious like i that movie i thought was like fine not great but i thought it was fine so avatar Uh, is trying to take itself seriously as like a contemplative work of art (laughs) yes and then like because james cameron takes himself very seriously um and then, like, you get a mech scene. Like, he already did that with Ripley and Alien. I don't need to see it in your fucking Fern Gully remake, the live action Fern Gully, okay? With, a, a, and then you take a, throw a mech in there and have the mech pick up a knife. Like, just, like, just fucking shoot things. Like, if you're gonna. <sighs> anyway, I would say also, that why would you make a ju- theming like- for a theme park is way more interesting than Avatar theming, which is, uh,. The jungle, the av- like just, I guess, a little bit glowier of a jungle. It's cool because it's like a savage land. You get to see cool stuff, but it's just like an un. I wish they had done any other property because they like really hit a home run with the Avatar land. I'm not, I'm not disparaging the land. I think the ride is good, and I think they like. I think the rides are fun and everything, and like they did a good job, and the theming is like super on point. It's like incredible, but it's Avatar. And that's so, overrated. All right. So no one cares about Avatar. I mean, like, literally no one cares about Avatar. But what what's with the Mario ride? Let's go back to Mario Land because we got a bunch of Nintendo fans here. Like, what is the Mario mm-hmm. Kart ride? Um, I have not been on it yet. I, I didn't go. The ride was the line was three hours. And I was like, mm, I've got a season pass. I'll come back in October. These fucking locals over there in California, for all the rest of us, we're like, like going to a theme park is like a big deal. We got to get on a plane. It's a family trip. And you're just like, oh, yeah, let me just let me just pop over to L.A. above L.A. And let's, yeah, we'll go to the Mario Land, but we're not going to go on like the big new ride that everyone wants to ride. Yeah, you're right. I mean, yeah, three hour line. Like, screw that. Yeah. I mean, also, it was it's a 30 minute drive for us. Yeah, I know. You you lucky people. Yeah. Uh, also, wait, you were there today on like a summer Saturday afternoon? No, I was on, I was on Thursday. Thursday. Thursday? And it was still crazy. I guess it's summer, right? Are, are kids summer. out of school? Yeah. Okay. All the schools are out. Oh, man. Nope. Worst time to do anything. No, it, it's great because everyone's in the Mario Land. So we went to all the other rides and we got through in like three hours. Oh, all right. Literally did every other ride. One ride like, like that I, we wanted to do. You can't call it a land if it only has one ride. It's just like a okay. really built up ride at that point until they put in another ride. This is just I mean, like, it's a land. It's a land because it has its own bathroom and it has an, an eatery and multiple shops. Yeah, that's the bathroom and the gift shop to the one ride in Super Mario Land. Mo- that's why I said multiple shops. Uh, OK, I mean, what's there cool? Is there like cool exclusive stuff to buy? I don't know. There, I guess there is. I, I, someone was telling me uh, that the armbands are actually amiibos, which I didn't realize, or I probably would have bought them. Ooh. Um, yeah. That's gonna. Oh man, it, are those like exclusive to Universal or like Universal armbands? Yeah. Yes. And so you can only buy them at Universal, and I guess there was like golden ones in Japan. That was like an exclusive event one. So this could be like a really dumb thing that could happen. I don't I know if they are in fact amiibos. That could be wrong. I have not fact checked this, so don't. Don't quote me. I didn't buy any, but I was like, oh, I guess if I need some of these armbands, at least it's only 30 minutes away. Yeah. All right. So, I mean, we live in this world where, like, the concept of a, a area limited collectible or something like that, like, doesn't exist. Like, someone's just going to go and buy 5,000 of them and put them on eBay or, like, hoard them or people will save them. Nothing gets gets naturally lost to time anymore. So, uh, it's uh, kind of a moot point, but man i want someone in 30 years to be like oh you're collecting the nintendo switch set do you have the amiibo set oh yeah do you have the universal armband variant because i have all 37 uh that's fun johnny yeah i agree um i'm happy i don't live near there i i don't like buying like just mass-produced like junk like i did i don't think i bought anything at disney even like star wars or all that stuff but uh I'll probably be tempted to go in there and buy some mass produced junk. Uh, yeah, I di- you know, I didn't even walk into the shop. I was like, mm, I don't even want to be tempted to buy stuff. I'm like, I peeked in. The theming was awesome. I'm like, OK, like, let's save it. Uh, my wife, it was it was also her birthday. So we're like, yeah, let's let's go. Let's go to the other lands and just like relax and 
go have breakfast. So I went and had breakfast, and then we walked on all the other rides. It was great. So your review of Super Mario Land is, and we went there, but it was crowded, so we left. Uh, it's theming and how it looks is like an A, but right now it's just too busy, and that's fine. It's it's new, and it's the beginning of the summer, of course. Like, you know, you know what the best part? Like, I usually will never go to a theme park in the summer at all, but Southern California has been like ice cold, so it was not even seventy degrees when I was there. It was raining. Uh, very weird. So, but because there's only one ride, though, Johnny, do you do you think that Super Mario Land, even with the good theming, was a little bit overrated? Um, I would say, I would say right now it might be overrated, but I I think, I think the Universal Orlando one will be properly rated, and um, I think over time, you know, it, it could be uh, even the. I think this one might be underrated over time because I think it's like the first accessible one in the United States. So everyone wants to go there. It's like, you know, you can't go to Orlando and do it. You can only come to a smaller universal in California. So yeah, overrated right now. All right. But I don't later. It's going to be everyone underrated. is just, I, I don't know if everyone is like on me, like you'd like stone cold, just like killed my transition. And I don't know how to react. I mean, I, I came back to, over, I've said overrated like 12 times for you to transition. But you gave me like a real answer and I'm like, what? I, <laughs> you didn't even go to the shops and ride the ride. Uh, all right, Johnny, I, I don't know how correctly rated uh, the Universal Super Mario Land is. Is it called Super Mario Land? Uh, yes. Okay. That's a good, good hit. I, I like that it's the same name as the game. Um, but Johnny, this episode, we are going to be talking about some of the most overrated and underrated collectible games, but really also just categories of things that we think are, are overrated and underrated uh, because people like your opinions and hot takes. And I think a lot of people who listen to us all the time might get the idea of some of these that we, uh, I mean, most of these aren't going to be shockers or new things. Uh, I do want to make one correction. It's called super Nintendo world, not super Mario world. Oh, all right, well that sucks. If it was Super Mario Land or Super Mario World, that'd be cool. Maybe it would, maybe it's an SEO thing. They just yeah. they gotta get some new on the internet, which well, I, I, like, I guess they appreciate. I mean, it's Nintendo too, so you probably want to advertise what your brand is. Um, I guess yeah. I mean, well, I mean, they Mario's hit, they, their brand. They, I mean, they hit three keywords: Super Nintendo and World. All right. I mean, and also by not saying Mario, that I guess that like you could then expand and build like a Zelda area if you want, and you're not like locked. Yeah, all right, that's that's probably okay. Or Donkey Kong, because that's more likely because Donkey Kong They're is a, a is one of the pillars of Nintendo, um, and completely overrated. Uh, Except by Tower, who says <laughs> that is it. so. Donkey Kong is overrated. We're gonna start the episode with like. I like I would put it in the top ten most important games of all time. Maybe like on the upper top ten. You're like, ah, Donkey Kong sucks. Fuck that monkey. No, no. But, this is going back to that that thing where I'm like, yeah, Donkey Kong's a pillar of Nintendo. And you're like, Nintendo doesn't give a shit about Donkey, Donkey Kong. They don't give a shit about Donkey Kong. He doesn't get his even. Deal. And then uh, then he's like, m like we were speculating what was in the movie, and then he's a major player in the movie, and clearly still a ten pole of Nintendo. Like I said, anyways. All right, what's the uh, what's the latest Donkey Kong game that's coming out? Oh, you looking forward uh, to any Donkey Kong uh, games? Yeah, it's probably Super Mario Kart. That, that doesn't ca wait. Super Mario Kart that came out in like 1991, yeah. dude. Yeah, that's yeah, great. Is there really not Anyways. a Donkey Kong Switch game? I just looked for Donkey Kong Switch and it just came up with Tropical Freeze, which I, mean, I realized. I mean, there's those Wii U games, I think. Yeah, but I mean, like, there's no. He's a tent pole of Nintendo. He doesn't even have a fucking game right now on nintendo and like like donkey kong country that that's not even like a nintendo nintendo game that's like a rare retro studios property so what are they doing it he's not an important character to nintendo he's not like a list when he should be a list i don't know they made a bunch of amiibos for him i what do you want me to say here donkey i don't know Kong's what's going underrated, on with donkey kong. Johnny, that's what i'm saying donkey kong is underrated all right but let's get into the the overrated and underrated uh, stuff that we uh, want to talk about. You have a list here, and we're gonna we're gonna see if I agree with everything you've said, and I, I think I mostly do. 
Um, and then I will pick at you and fight you when I disagree. All right. So uh, if you guys haven't uh, figured this out, sometimes Tyler picks an episode and I pick an episode. And, and sometimes we both just like commit. But this is a uh, more Tyler one. Uh, John, I'm not going to lie. I saw it. it, it there was a, a sports card channel that I follow and this popped up. I didn't even watch the video, but this popped up in my like YouTube subscriptions. And I'm like, oh, that's a good idea for just like a clickable episode. We take content wherever we can find it. Johnny, overrated, uh, overrated collectible video games. Johnny, Nintendo World Championships. I think that the uh, perception, I guess, yeah, the perception has changed because NWC is worth more than it used to be. But random sealed stuff is worth like multiple multiple times what an nwc is worth now so its status in the game collecting world has gone down that makes it overrated or wouldn't that make it underrated no i still think it's overrated uh if you take sealed like super high end sealed games out of the equation nwc is probably still like the top thing people would point to as the gaming holy grail yeah i i, I look i i i think less people are talking about nwc than ever before somehow like in the collective mind share uh I, yeah i would i would tilt nintendo world championship toward underrated right now you tilt it towards because, underrated yeah for for what its status was it, it is diminished i'm not saying this is like seen as a 10 out of 10 and it's gone down to like a 7 out of 10 but I don't think it deserves its spot as like I still think like an NWC Gold is probably the most expensive unsealed video game thing you could buy, right? It like what would be more expensive than that? Uh I don't know, but like I, I think the people who are buying those things right now aren't aren't like you know I, I don't think that's like your average collector. I, I, I don't think the the general collector base is out there. I think that would just be bought up by an investor. They're the ones who would be paying. So you're saying that like collectors don't care about NWC anymore. It's just like morphed off into its own like little NFT marketplace of just like people who are looking at spreadsheets and charts and it's not even like a collectible thing anymore. Well, I, I'm saying that like your average collector, it's like out of their reach, but it would be still to them like a grail item. But investors, they don't really care about it. And uh, they are looking at Mario. They would probably still buy it for the opportunity because somebody has said something to them about it. So somehow, like, because it's getting less traffic and less people are talking about it than ever before, it's not getting the hype it deserves, that it's leading to it being underrated. And I think that's largely because, because collector bros have, like, found other things, like, you know, well, that Matt sticker seal, this, like... If you ever went out and talked about, like, I don't know, your urban champions or something, uh, there's only four in the world or whatever, and talked about how fucking great that is, I will tell you just every single day of the week, I don't care if there's four golfs, okay, that exist in the world like this, I would much rather have an NWC. Also, in the world of conditional rarity, and 9.8s look so good, every NWC doesn't, there's like no 9s, right? So these things always just look like dog shit on paper. Give me give me that NWC gold. That's like the, the cream of the crop. The creme de la creme. I mean, I, I mean, the NWC gold is, is just a magazine contest prize. Like, that's yeah, the craziest shit. It's awesome, shit. too. Who like, cares if fucking, it's just a magazine prize? I mean, it's still, uh, it's cool. They made I so agree. few of them. I agree. Like, I think NWC is cool. I just don't think it's, like, $2 million cool and, like, is... Because someone born today has no connection to it. It's not like it has some relevance in Nintendo lore or anything. It has, like, is no relevance. It is Nintendo's... It, like, it was a big thing in 1990. Fucking Super Mario World was a big thing in 1991. So... I don't know. Still, still pretty cool. Also, I'm an old guy who likes old guy stuff. So, yeah, NWC is still cool to me. Look, I, I'm saying it's underrated for now, but I'm still going to tell you it's a boomer rare. It's like, you I mean, know, this is boomer. totally a boomer game. <laughs> yeah. I, I always thought there was like a mystique to NWC. And I'm talking, you know, like 15 years ago, because like I didn't know where you even go to like get one because you had to like kind of be in the high end inner circle. And the fact mm -hmm. that like I could I, I literally went to Heritage Auctions, I typed into NWC and like one is for sale in three weeks. Like the fact that I mean, they're, they are out there. There are there are dozens of these graded and circulating now and it is less exciting because the rarity 
I mean, it's not a matter of like, how do I even find one of these? It's like, okay, I wait for one to, to hit one of the big auction sites and I spend $100,000 or whatever. So uh, something that annoys me about NWC is, is, is the gray cart better than the gold cart? Which I think, yes, because the gray carts are the actual competition carts. But then the gold cart is like way rarer and looks way cooler. Uh, mm-hmm. But the gray carts are more and- common. And like, I don't like that there's not an obvious one that I could point to as the best thing. And I'm not saying this is a reason it's overrated. It's just something that frustrates me about NWC. I, I can understand that. I like and look, you always thought stadium events was the cooler thing, and I never did. I've always been on the NWC train consistently. Uh, so I, I think we can agree. I mean, now group. I'm on the Mario train. If you go on, on NES, like, fuck both of them. And yeah, like, just get a Matt sticker Mario, which I don't have. I Why? want one. But uh, Or like, I'd rather, like, I'm not saying like in a value sense or like, but like, give me like a Super Mint Hang Tab Castlevania. <laughs> like that. I, I well, care about that a lot more than Stadium Events or NWC. I've always been on that train, too. You know, I was beating that drum long before anyone ever beat it. I said, fuck all this nonsense. Like, buy the cool stuff that people are going to walk into your room and recognize. Like, get make sure you got your Marios and your Castlevanias. Uh, It's like, oh, cool, cool pro sports hockey. Who gives a shit? All right. I guess uh, RC Pro-Am 2 is great. And so is, uh, what what is it? Uh, What's the Mattel Police Chase or something? Is that what it's called? Mattel Police Chase. What Motor City Mattel, uh, Rescue Ma- or Matchbox? Yeah, Mo- yeah, Motor City. Yeah, Matchbox, okay. not Mattel. Matchbox. Yeah, I just, I just like, I know it's a a, a, t- a car. So, anyways, uh, yeah, who cares about those? Even though I actually think that game is cool, um, but like, uh, you know, is it cooler than Zelda? It is not. Anyways, what else? What what else is super overrated? Let's fight some more. All right. So I didn't want to, I didn't know how many specific games I could pick. I think you could look at the top game on almost any console and call it overrated. Yes. Uh, Like, I don't know. Maybe like with the exception of like GameCube, like Pokemon Box is like genuinely very rare. I think Pokemon Box is really cool in that it's actually fucking rare compared to some of his other shit at the top. But it's overrated, though. I mean, it's it's nothing. I don't. Over, it's a crazy. Rate. It's not a game. Yes, it's not a game. I, it it's it has the Pokemon name on it. it. It's something. Yeah, but it's not a game. It's overrated, but nowhere near enough to be on this list. I don't think. I, look, I, I think it's an interesting collectible. I'm not saying it's. I think it's a little overrated. All right, Johnny, you go to the top of uh, of Super Nintendo. You sort by highest price, and one or two, one or two from the top. I think it was at the top. In the very recent past, Hagane, the final conflict. Johnny, this game is like well over $2,000 for a nice complete in box. Johnny, this game was like a fucking random Super Nintendo game 10 years ago. It was like, like what What did YouTube do to this game? Like, this game was always hard to find. It, it was always like... It was Mike and Matt in the morning or whatever that stupid so shit was. So, what... <laughs> Was this one of the James and Mike Monday games? Yeah, Maybe. Yeah, it was one but, of those. like, in 2013, this game just started rocketing up on a starship, and it made it to, like, the very top. This is... All right. There are collectors out there. Uh, I think I, I've definitely done this for a long time. I think Bird Dog Gaming is someone who does this a lot. We just, like, look at all the stuff in a console library and go on eBay and just, like, see how much of that stuff is available. And you always find, like, wow... Like, there's five copies of the top game available. That doesn't seem that rare. And then you find some game that's, like, $45, and it's just not on eBay. And you go into Souls, and there's, like, one incomplete one. And you're like, why is the top game the top game? Because people are only buying the top game because it's rare. But then there's this random $45 game that seems rarer than anything on the set. And you start, like, being like, man, if people figured out that this is the game, this game could explode in price. And so Hagane feels like one of those like upper middle, like you have to be in the no uncommon games that actually did it. Everyone got its eyeballs on it. It became the thing. And all of a sudden now it's like $2,500. It, it's crazy. I, mean, I understand it's a, it's like a good game. It's a, it's a hidden gem that's been unhidden for 10 years now. But, uh, well, let, let's, let's, I want to talk about that phenomenon because, uh, I see people come in here and that's like a typical criticism that, uh, people have. Is like, oh, well, I see the top game that's on there, and it's like, it's available on eBay, so uh, it's clearly not the rarest. What about this one that there's only one of on eBay, and there hasn't been another one in like three months? It's like, well, 
when it becomes a top game, it gets press and it gets hype and that makes people go find it. And then uh, people are digging for it. And then you get all the treasure hunters out there who want to like make money. So that pushes them to places like eBay. It forces it forces supply into the market. And if you took that forty five dollar game that like no one cares about and applied uh, supply and demand to it and uh, slapped a rarity sticker on it, you know people would then dig more of those out as well. So that that's just like a thing that happens. That's just that's just normal collecting. I used to like not believe that that happened. The game that really did it for me was Titus the Fox. Um... Because I was collecting just a loose Game Boy set, and, like, if you asked me, like, I was looking, like, collecting a loose Game Boy set, even loose, like, takes a while. Like, I was, I was doing that for months and months and months. And a U.S. copy of Titus the Fox, loose, just didn't come up at any price during my entire time doing this. Like, I could not find one. And, uh, like, I, I thought, like, I found, like, this crazy thing. Like, no one has Titus the Fox. And it was, like, a $7 game because everyone's getting the PAL copies mixed up, and those are worthless. Uh, so I ended up buying a complete one for like $250 because it was the only copy I could find. And I thought like, wow, I've really got something special here. But shortly after I completed the set, like people realized like, oh, there's no fucking Titus the Foxes. And it went up to be like a $40 or $50 cartridge. And then once it's a $40 or $50 cartridge, like, oh, all of a sudden they're for sale all the time now. Uh, so, yeah, once something gets kind of discovered as something with a little bit of value, all of a sudden, oh, they're all for sale and sitting because people don't always just want to impulse buy a $50 game for their set. Well, the obnoxious thing, too, is that that rubbed off onto the Game Boy Color one as well. And that's so funny because I was thinking like, oh, yeah, the Game Boy Color one's garbage because the Game Boy one's the one I can't find. You yep, want to do a, nope, a quick it, check uh, on, on Titus the Fox Game Boy? Yeah, I, no it, one cares. About it is. This game it's all. still quite available. It, okay. It's uh, you can find several copies. And now it's like it started. Titus the Fox has actually started to shrink because it's been on my save search for a long time. And I'm just like, I'm just going to keep waiting on Titus the Fox because uh, I saw it after the boom, and I was like, "Damn it, this is a game I wanted for a while." Um, and yeah, it, it started shrinking on both Game Boy Color and Game Boy, but it, it's still up there. Um, but now I think I'll be able to get a complete in box one for maybe three hundred dollars. Finally, you know. All right, Titus the Fox uh, currently overrated. It's on the way down. But uh, yeah. I'm, I mean, all right. I know. I mean, there's going to be like Super Nintendo people who are like, "Oh, but Hagane is is super cool." I think it's great that like one of the coolest Super Nintendo games, or one of the most expensive Super Nintendo games, is actually cool because like Aero Fighters. Like, all right, I get it's rare. I know Aero Fighters, but it's like it's a mediocre arcade port that's not super exciting to me. Whereas Hagane. An exclusive, difficult action platformer game is like, okay, that's a fucking cool game to be have at the top. But there are so many, like, uncommon, super cool games to have at the top that I could, that I, I don't know. I, I mean, I think Earthbound, or you could put Earthbound kind of in this same category, but Earthbound has so much hype. Like, Earthbound has hype going back to when, like, game collecting and YouTube started being a thing. Um, like, and there's, like, this whole cult group of people who love earthbound so it makes sense that earthbound's like some ridiculously expensive game uh like there's no there's no cult of hagane except for like the hardcore super nintendo gamer people well and i mean and i would put earthbound in the over i mean earthbound earthbound is the joke for being overrated right like if you were talking about captain overrated it, it's still earthbound is so is there like a a meme value to earthbound almost in that like there, yes it's overrated is. but like it's Earthbound. I don't know. It's. <laughs> I feel like no. Like, look. It's still. I look. People were mad about it when it shot up in price. Even when it fell in price, they were just mad about it. So then they're like, "Oh, it's so overrated," which it was. But they like it was still desirable. Even being like, just because you're overrated doesn't mean it's not desired. Um, you could say that. I mean, desirability all shouldn't have scaled to. Them. Obviously, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, Earthbound is still one of the most desirable things like that you can get as a super nintendo collector and just like random collectors it's got a big box it looks like a fucking trophy it looks like a trophy earthbound is a tro like earthbound is the game you put on like the top middle of your shelf if you're like taking a picture yeah. if you like posting on on reddit game collecting like that's the game you put because it, it's the trophy and i mean like hagane could be that too um but it's, it's a I mean, lot less, less impressive so. in his tiny little box People aren't going to be able to see how nice your box is. Oh, you paid a you probably had to pay a three thousand dollar premium to get the box that wasn't all crappy because Hagane is really condition dependent. Uh, 
Yeah, Hagane is a is a pain in the ass. I I don't know if I quite think it's overrated. I think it's super overpriced, and I think for the hardcore, it's still like I think it became super overrated for a while. I don't know who cares about it now, but it it's still it's an obnoxious game. I fucking I hate this game. I hate it so much, Tyler. It's it's in a vacuum like Hagane is cool. It's the fact that it went from like such a middle of the pack game to the top. You look at Nintendo. What are the top games? It's like. You know, Flintstones, Little Samson, and and stadium events, and it's been that way forever. You look at N64, what are the top games? You know, it's like Super Bowling, Sculptor's Cut, it's been that way forever. Hagane went from, like, the upper middle to the very, very top, and it's crazy to me. Like, yep. there's not a lot of games that do that and become the new top thing. Oh, yeah, no, I, I agree. Uh, but it, uh, maybe you see, maybe I shouldn't be complaining about this. Maybe it's a good thing that people's opinions change, because I do think that, like... There are so many games at the top just because they're the games at the top and oh, they've always been never. at the top and yeah. they become self-fulfilling prophecies because everyone has the eyeballs and just like, oh, what are the five most expensive NES games type thing? Uh, so maybe it's a good thing that like Hagane was able to break out of the pack and people recognized it for what it was in terms of rarity and quality. So maybe I shouldn't be complaining about this. So it's weird, because, but it broke out of the pack because it got mentioned on... You know, in, in, on a boomer YouTube channel from back in the day, and um, look, we were all like everyone like just looked, and you knew once it got mentioned, you should go buy it, or you're going to suffer later if you ever thought about buying it. So I, I don't know. Like a lot of these games did that, and I, I think I'm not going to say Agana is literally one of those games because it doesn't come up that often. It is still super condition dependent. I, I think it is. You were right. One of those ones that was correctly identified as being like, huh, this is actually not very common, especially in good condition. But, uh, you know, I just, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm still a little salty about it. I don't know if I would put it quite overrated, but it definitely used to be. I think that rating has come down. Okay. As less people care about that. And for some of the reasons we're going to talk about, like some of the other overrated stuff, just because I don't know how much investors care about this game. A Hagane? And like... Yeah, like Johnny, I, I think uh, they sealed do a little bit. I sold for twenty three thousand dollars, and I realized that was a twenty twenty one sale. Um, but like, people kind of care about this game, even on the high. Yeah, high. but like, uh, how did like a black box game which sold millions of like a sealed one of those like they're just probably just doing better in general? I'm yeah, <laughs> black box games overrated. What's up? I'm saying it, Johnny. Uh, Agree. Black box games are overrated, especially because investors found them. We agree 100% on that. No, I think they're probably fine. <laughs> I think they're fine. Similar to how I like Hagane being able to move from like the middle of the pack to the very top. I like that. I like the idea of perception changing. I like the idea of moving from full sets to subsets, which is why I'm, I'm not going to call black box overrated. Okay, you're a madman. But, but that's what people are doing. I mean, no, no one wants a Donkey Kong 3. No one wants a Clue Clue Land. They want it because it's part of the set. So, like, it's the same reason Hagane is expensive because it completes the set. Like, people need these stupid, shitty black box games. Yeah, I'm calling you out, Donkey Kong 3. Here, I'm going to give you one that's overrated. All right. Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. What? What? <laughs> where, where, where is this coming from? There's no universe in any aspect that that's overrated. The correct collectible is really Punch Out, <laughs> oh the classic edition, because there's less of those. Fewer, but um, no. Yeah, fewer. <laughs> what? Yeah, the, the, <laughs> thank you for that. Say, like, great. Yeah, this is like one of the dumb grammar corrections I just don't give a shit about. <laughs> yes, I, I know. When we're talking about numbers, we should say fewer. Like, who gives a shit? Stop being so fucking pedantic. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's like a Game of Thrones meme, but... Mike Tyson's punch out like I I would almost all right so like sealed yes like who who's paying like $300,000 for this like you're crazy like it's a great video game but like the fact that I mean maybe don't spend $300,000 on any video game but if you're going to like make sure it has Mario or Zelda on it but uh or or uh John Madden is the other one you can go for but if we're talking about the regular world Mike Tyson it's like the perfect video game one it, it it's easy for anyone to get into. It is super hard to like beat. It's the per and it's like it, unlimited skill ceiling because you can't memorize things. Like the way the game works, like unlimited skill ceiling. As a cartridge, what does a Mike Tyson cost? Like twenty five dollars. 
if you want like a complete in box like rare thing to like really go for you can go for that first print with the white bullets that'll be super expensive it's got the letter which is a really cool thing not a lot of nintendo games have like interesting packing stuff if you want just a regular complete in box there's a ton of just like regular complete in box you can go for the variants you got punch out you got like the classic series thing punch out there's so much to go yeah. it's the perfect collectible and the perfect game and a game everybody loves and not even not even does everybody love it. It's like correctly identified as one of the greatest Nintendo games. And it's not one of these like maybe overrated Nintendo games that like, oh, well, it's because people just don't play the magic of Shaharza. They don't know how great it is. But no, Mike Tyson is actually one of the best Nintendo games. Everything about this game deserves to be in the top Nintendo, except for the crazy sealed prices. Johnny, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm just saying compared to uh, the other versions of Mike Tyson's punch out, it's uh or just punch out. I think it's overrated. The other one, they have. Le- <laughs> they just made less of those. There's a lot of Mike Tyson's punch out sold. What I feel like we're regressing. Like the thing, the way of the future is go is like iconic and important things. And the iconic thing of Mike Tyson's punch out, Johnny, is the Mike Tyson fight. Yeah, or it might be that I'm just like super trolling you right now. Oh my! Into a froth. Stop and, uh, it! You can't admit myself. that to the people. You gotta, we gotta keep up the facade. Oh, oh, oh. Um, no. Here, here's what's underrated. You know what's underrated? The Canadian version of Punch Out with the blue bordered letter. Oh yeah, that's interesting. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of Canadian variants, but um, sure. I don't know a lot about Canadian variants, but I do think things like the sticker sealed Canadian Nintendo games, which are a lot more common than American ones, underrated. And uh, yeah, that blue bordered Tyson letter. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I think so, too. Underrated. But then when you get it, you have to look at that dash C-A-N on your box. I just can't look at that dash yeah, C-A-N. Yeah, look, agree. Um, I, I I went a long way around to get to that point. <laughs> that You just wanted to bring that up. You just want people to know, like, hey, maybe go check out Canadian Mike Tyson. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's got a fun variant. You know, I love variants. Johnny, we love, love me some variants. Super Are variants overrated. underrated or overrated, Johnny? I don't oh, even man, know. I think they're both. Uh, yeah, they probably are definitely both. Yeah, depends. Hey, here's a hot take for you. And I'm just, this is nowhere in our docs or anything. I just want to say it. Do you know what's uh, completely overrated? Mega Man, the video game series. <laughs> where, where do you get these takes? Uh, I just think, look, I think Mega Man 2 is a fine game. I enjoy the Mega Man games. I think it's a fine series, but I think the the price in the collector's market for Mega Man games uh, and like, that continue even on to like GBA. It's insane. It, these are overrated items. Stop it. Overrated. Uh, overrated. I, I don't series. even like. I've played a bunch of Mega Man. See, I haven't even played a lot of the mainline stuff. But like, I played like the the weird the battle game, the grid RPG. What is that called? Battle Network. Like, I thought like yeah, that's like battle. a random spinoff, and I thought those games were like really fun. And then, like, they made the Overrated. remakes, uh, not the remakes, but, like, 9 and 10. Like, I'm sure, like, Mega Man purists don't like them, and I understand, like, they're not possible on NES hardware, but, like, the fact that we got new Mega Man games in the exact same style of old Mega Man games is, like, super good. My perception of the Mega Man series, like, you have, like, 2 and 3 are beloved on NES, and, like, some people have, like, the the more beloved, like, some people like 1 because they were... All right, anyway, let's say, like, 2 and 3 are the most beloved on NES, and you get to Super Nintendo, and X is super beloved again. And then you get to a PlayStation, and X4 is super beloved again. And then you go to GBA, and, like, fucking the, the Battle Network games are pretty beloved. And then you go, like, into the future, and, uh, I mean, I don't know, is Mega Man 11, 11's beloved? Probably not. But, um... No. What, what's a, a future Mega Man? Like, people don't like the PS2 stuff, but, uh... Do people like, like, ZX? On, like, the I DS? I like the DS, yeah. Like, I feel like... It is a game that has beloved entries like throughout its lifespan. So I don't where are you getting that it's overrated? Because people like it too much. It's not as good as people like it. All right. I mean, I I maybe agree, but so if I we'll was see. the world's biggest Mega Man fan, I would think it is like amazing that I have like 12 identical games that I could go play. Because like I I wish I wish more than anything there were twelve identical Ninja Gaiden games I could go play Johnny. So okay, all right, all right. You're calling Mega Man. I'm d- I, no, and I, I'm I'm saying like mostly as a collectible. Like I, I think the games aren't like because there's so many Mega Man games. Iter- iteratively, they are not that interesting um, as a collectible. So 
Oh, but uh, that like that is attached to the price. Like, if you like them, you like them. Go play them. I, I'm not like, hey, Final Fantasy VII is an overrated game. This thing you like uh, to play is shit. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying as a collectible. I mean, um, remember, I usually keep things focused as a as a collectible object. Uh, Johnny, a pretty decent first print Mega Man just sold for five hundred seventy six dollars on Heritage Auctions. Uh, that feels down. Complete in box, obviously, but uh. That doesn't feel that... Oh, one sold last year for less than $500? Oh, it's got an incorrectly married part. I don't know what that is. But, uh... I don't... I, I don't think this is overrated. I think okay. Mega Man is fairly iconic as a video game franchise and deserves some I, I, I think some it's iconic. I'm not talking about... I'm not but talking I mean, about a collectible part of the thing Mega that would Man, make I, it rated in general is how iconic it is, and that's, like, what brings up the price. Well, I, so. that's why I said the series, not like Mega Man 1. I think I think Mega Man 1 and 2 and 3 are properly rated. I think X is probably proper rated. I think paying ass, ass nine money for Mega Man X3 is ridiculous. Uh, paying money for the saturn version you you a fan of that <laughs> okay so update. i know you're not we just had a saturn uh saturn episode where i like i went out of my way to not include the mega man games mega man x4 on saturn is like a 400 hundred dollar dollar game a sealed 85 plus vga 85 plus mega man x4 on heritage auction sold for 200 dollars. literally half the so price you- of the complete in box Saturn one, and not a shitty sealed one. Like a mint condition sealed PlayStation one is worth half of complete in box on Saturn. So that is why Mega Man games are not getting picked on my Sega Saturn collectibles list. So it's overrated. No, some are, some aren't. Johnny, that's why I said it's a, a huge a franchise. Whole. I can't that's, talk about it as a whole. That's why I said the series that not and not one specific game. Oh I think goodness. as a series. How do you race. feel? All right, I so don't... Heritage. Oh, had... I'm sorry. Are you not a fan of minutia in in this thing that we do called collecting? <laughs> well, rating an entire series is the opposite of minutia. <sighs> Tyler. Also, all right. We, so we like I, nuance. I, I've nuance only, I've only like, I've beaten Mega Man two and three, and I've played one a bunch, and then like four, five, six, kind of like everyone else. Uh, I've played some five and uh, four and six. Fuck them. Which is like what everyone does. People are like, yeah, two and three, and then it's like, all right, have a Mega Man fill, and then like, the 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 true gamers go and play the other ones, and like, oh, these these are great, and everyone, you guys suck because you guys only played the first three. Um, so I feel like my opinion on Mega Man is completely invalid because I've played like the most popular Mega Man games, and that's it. Mm, probably I played the, I've played the Mega Man DOS game more than I've played Mega Man Six, Johnny. Uh, so you probably you probably chose correctly there too. Just saying. Oh my god! Uh, Mega Man DOS sold for eleven hundred dollars sealed on on Heritage recently, and Incorrect. they had one of those big whoever PC sales. That, whoever did that made a mistake. They should. I, so there was a lot Someone of stuff selling for like ridiculous to. prices. Johnny, uh, fucking uh, Madden, like a random, very random Madden sold for like fourteen thousand dollars. So I feel like the DOS Mega Man, even if it is a stupid piece of shit game. It's an exclusive Mega Man game, and it is among the rarer Mega Man games. So sure, you know what? Sure, thousand dollars for that sealed. Why not? Okay. Anyway, I also thought you'd be a little harder on Mike Tyson's Punch Out, being it's just like started out as an arcade game. Like you hate that. It's not even. I mean, I don't. The it has nothing to do with the the series itself. Yeah, it's Mike Tyson's Punch Out is like the third Punch Out game. Um. But that's that's the game as far as anyone is concerned. It's like punch out and super punch out and kind of fuck everything else. Like if I see punch it out the arcade, cool, I'll give it a thumbs up and I won't play it. But uh, everyone knows it's just punch out or Mike Tyson's punch out. You see, it's like I'm defending it this hard, but then I look at the sealed market. And I'm like, who's paying three hundred and twenty four thousand dollars for a punch out? This makes no sense. And like multiple times it goes for over one hundred thousand dollars. I'm like, that's insane. It's super overrated. Anyways. Uh, let's, uh, let's talk about more overrated games. I, look, I, I know you have your whole list, but you said interject with your stuff, Johnny. And so that's what I'm doing. Yeah. I mean, that's, um, that's good. We need that. Yeah. All right. Um, what, what else? Uh, can we just talk about the game that is the most overrated game ever? Or do you want, no, let's, let's okay. talk about which one do you want to talk about? The most uh, overrated see, I ever. Think either, I think almost either of these could be the most overrated game ever. I think the most overrated game ever. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about it. It's probably stadium events, right? Stadium events. 100%. Um, what a boomer rare it is definitely a boomer rare um i do want one but a lot less than i used to it has a super limited appeal 
right? Of who is actually collecting this. The price is sky high, has been forever. Uh, it was like uh, just a way for you to like kind of break into that barrier of the highest high end gamers and be like, look, I'm one of you fellows. Here's my membership card. I have a stadium events. Hello, gents. You know, it's like that guy. Oh, hello. I've arrived with my To be clear, events. I totally see it as your membership ticket to the cool kid club. Like, if you have a state, I'm not yeah. shitting on stadium events. Like, yeah, you're you're definitely a cool guy if you have stadium events. And I, I just was always like, this is the thing. This is the thing we care about. This is so boring. I, could, I just couldn't think of a more boring thing. And it, then you love to point out that the lore around it may not even be correct. Uh, so yeah, like it, uh, so it's story is even in question. So yeah, what, what and, lore around it? What do you mean? You can play a variant of it. You know, you can go play there. There's a, a perfectly playable stadium events right next to you for a lot, lot, lot less money. Yeah. So, I mean, I think I like, we've talked, we've literally had a whole show on revising the NES list. Was that an after dark or was that just a show? No, that was a real episode. We did yeah. that. I mean, I think stadium events and world-class track meet, I mean, they're the same video game. Even if you're collecting the full set of NES, like, this is the same video game. And I don't think stadium events should be stricken from the list. I think world-class track meet should be stricken from the list. But world-class track meet is just a version of stadium events. So unless you're collecting, like, every Matt Sticker black box game, like, like what is what is the criteria? Do we need all the earliest ch- uh, date codes on, like, the chips to have an NES set? Or do we need one of every video game? And I realized, like, Yes, the criteria a lot of people have chosen is like, oh, different publisher or, or like different name, like that makes it a different game. So yes, like whatever set you have made is valid. But when looking at what the game is itself, like the game, it's the same game as it's a variant of a much, much cheaper and more available game. Okay. Well, let's go to like a soccer game on the Super Nintendo. Is it Sensible Soccer, which is just International Super Soccer? Is that what the translation is? Uh, I don't know what inter- uh, international is that. Is international that superstar kickoff? soccer just a sensible soccer game? I can't remember. Okay, uh, there, but, but there's sure. there's uh, it doesn't matter for for this exercise. There is a soccer game on the Super Nintendo, right? That is also a PAL game, completely the same game. They just changed the they just changed the title. Is that a different game? If you were collecting the world set, would you buy both? No one collects the world set. <laughs> <laughs> if you were, look, but we already talked about how not collecting the world set, it's just some dumb border that we decided to put on it. You're right. Look, you're we right, put on right, these right. other walls and then they're like, oh no, that wall is too much. Get out of here. I mean, I got a better, I mean, like Cannondale Cup on Super Nintendo is the same thing as Mountain Bike Rally. And like almost yeah. every list will have those separate because they look nothing alike. Like if you don't know anything about the games, you just be like, okay, those are two different biking games. But it's just the same game that was completely released in two different boxes. Yep. So um, yeah, like you. Uh, so you don't need one, Johnny. Whatever one. I'm I don't just know which asking, one came out would, later. Would you buy both? Strike it. Like uh, this. This is just like they're just two. Di- and like it's an exercise. I'm I'm asking you, but also the people. Do you need to have both? Ask yourself that. Does it count? Or are you fine if you were in this situation where you're like, well, I got to buy both of them. And these are real questions I've asked myself, and I'm not always sure of the answer. Like, I I do believe to some degree it's got a different splash screen, so that's a little bit. But like Contra versus Probotector, right? I'm more inclined to buy because changing the sprite to me fundamentally changes the story in my head. And I'm not saying that's correct. But fundamentally, in my brain, I go, oh, well, this is robots versus, like, aliens versus people versus aliens. And that's not the same thing. Um, So my brain changes a little bit. It also makes me wonder why they die in one hit, because, like, the robots, it should be tougher than that. But whatever. All right. I'm going to defend stadium events for one second. Even though I'm going to look at our list, like, it is probably financially, like, monetarily the most overrated game probably ever. Because, uh, like, even Nintendo World Championships, like, it's a very unique, like, promotional and thing. No, and Stadium Events is just, like, no a game. There's no other. You can't just go pick up. You can't go pick up the Nintendo Trial Pack. Uh, you know, that's the same thing of a different name. Sure. Um, so I, I had a whole big YouTube script written about Stadium Events and whether it should count. It was, like, really going deep into, like, what defines a video game. Uh. Every aspect of stadium events 
uh, basically doesn't count in another set. So there are there are sets where the game name changes and people don't care. They're just like, well, like, you know, uh, Midway Arcade Classics versus Midway Arcade Classics 1. Everyone just looks at that and they're like, okay, but it's the same game. There, there are publisher variants that don't count in other sets. I realize there are publisher variants that do count in other sets. There are code changes that don't count in other sets. There are title screen changes that don't count in other sets. But, but, when you combine, uh, like, a code change, a title change, and a publisher change, it is actually very difficult to find another video game where the, that has, like, all three of these aspects and people don't, like, count it. So, Stadium Events is relatively unique in how different of a game it is in everything except for its gameplay. Uh, so, I think there is an argument for the people who want to say it counts in that it's a, a re-release that uniquely has a lot of little different things. Um, or, you know, World Class Track Meet is. Uh, but whatever, I still say World Class Track Meet doesn't count. And also, like random rarities like we're, we're living in the world of random rarities every day so i think yes the fact that it's on the most important console and it's the one of the rarest retail games is it's it's an interesting thing but i don't think it's the most interesting thing like i think like uh, there are people who would say like a complete in box family fun fitness with the pad is better than stadium events and i bet like joe is one of those people <laughs> like someone who's I'm deep into those, nes that probably thinks they're cooler things than stadium events i 100 like the power like oh it comes with this is the first thing that came with a power pad like packed in that's like that's interesting oh that's cool like how why did this happen oh uh name change who gives a shit uh let me ask you blazing Heri heroes versus mystaria for the sega saturn i'm 100 the same game I'm, oh, yeah, I, they got I a would probably name. lean more towards removing games from sets or like more than almost anyone I think like at anything that's like remotely the same game should just be combined. Yeah. So Mystaria and Blazing Heroes, if you don't know, are the same game. They uh, Blazing Heroes is the updated name, but they even have like the same disc art. So it, it's yeah. real bad. Um. Anyways, uh, but if you're collecting a like, if you look at a Saturn list, I'm sure both of those games are on there. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah. Because I mean, I mean, like even. Johnny, as collector, like, uh, this isn't, like, uncommon knowledge. Like, people know this is the same game. But if you're just, like, a new Saturn collector, you're just looking at a list of games that you're just not going to play, especially RPG, like, mid-RPGs, like, in the middle of the set. Like, maybe you'll try, like, Shining the Holy Ark, because it's, like, one of these top-tier games. But you're, you're not going to play Mystaria, Realms of Lore. Uh, so you're just not going to know it's the same game as Blazing Heroes. You're just going to be like, oh, well, these are obviously different games. Cannondale Cup is obviously a different game from Mountain Bike Rally on Super Nintendo. Look at them. They're just completely different. No. They're totally different games. Why would you why would you even why would you even assume? The other thing with stadium events is that it the price of stadium events, like I don't even know what a stadium events costs complete in box these days, but a fucking lot. Oh. Um the price is a hundred percent based on the only Nintendo games that matter are the American uh licensed games. And like the American yeah, the American licensed games and like the first of all, the unlicensed games are rarer than than stadium events, or at least some of them. Uh, but then, like the story of NES didn't stop in the eighties and nineties, and like you have these games like Garage Cart. Like Garage Cart is super rare, but it's also like really historically interesting because the NES homebrew scene, like NES, is like this console that has never died and like has had another resurgence with like NES Maker. So, like, I look at, like, Garage Cart and almost think, like, Garage Cart is a cooler thing to own than a stadium events now. Garage Cart is, like, the second life of the Nintendo Entertainment System, and stadium events, like, in the history of the NES, is, it's fucking nothing. It's a curiosity. It's not nothing, but it's a curiosity compared to something like Garage Cart. Or even, like, even, like, Battle Kid. Like, Garage Cart was the first, which is very, very important, and then, like, Battle Kid maybe was the breakout of like the first really, really popular homebrew. I don't even know if that's true. I might have to look into my history of homebrew here. But uh, maybe I'm just talking to someone who thinks like uh, most people just look at the homebrew and they're like, ah, that doesn't count. But they're fucking video games. They're the people sat down at a computer and programmed a game for the console you like and released it on a cartridge. That's all we're collecting. That's, that's what we do. What do you mean homebrew doesn't count? It's it's the same thing. <laughs> The st Doesn't count. smaller companies, different time frame, but it's the same thing. We're collecting video games for the Nintendo. Ah! 
I mean, it's just more of our artificial borders that we put on things. And, and I'm not saying it's wrong to put borders on your collecting. You definitely should, and there's things you should care about. And uh, a lot of that gets grouped up by, like, what a majority of people care about. Uh, but, yeah, like, I'm not going to sit here and say that Garage Cart isn't a legitimately cool thing. Like, that's, like, pretty cool. And also, is it important? Yes, I believe it was 100% important. So, um you know, I'm not going to say stadium events has no importance or anything, but it, I'm not I'm not as enthused about it. So Sculptor's Cut, or no, Sculptor's Cut, oh, spoilers. Um, stadium events will always be the rarest licensed game for Nintendo's most important console, for probably the most important console. I would I would combine Famicom and NES into the most important console. So it will always be something, which, you know what, let's move on. Stadium events will always be something. I'm, I'm, it's, it's not going to zero. I mean, it's stadium events. No. And, you know, even beyond that, Stadium Events has so much history. Stadium Events has, like, decades of collectors who have, like, built it up into the thing that it is today. And, like, so it has almost become important in the hobby itself as, like, this grail piece. So, like, even if it kind of doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things, it's, like, kind of important to game collecting in a weird way. Yeah, well, yes, it is. I, I Look, and just because something is overrated doesn't mean it's not important. Now, that's not the same thing. I, yeah, we've... Yeah. Johnny, let's... Uh, um, let, let's move stadium on. We talked about stadium events enough. I think people yeah. kind of get the idea. Yeah, it's oh look, super important. Move, yeah, move us on. St- so okay, okay, stadium events super important. Let's let's not be crazy. Stadium events has something going for it. You know what doesn't? Fucking Clay Fighter Sculptor's Cut for the Nintendo but 64. It, hey, it must be the first rental game ever. Fucking so. All right, all right, all right. Man, it's not uh, so, like. Uh, I realize I'm a set collector, so like I can only I can only harp on set collecting so much here. So all right, complete in box sculptor's cut is rare. I realize like the manual and and get a nice box like that stuff I understand is hard, and maybe there's a justifiable premium on that. The fucking cartridges are over a thousand dollars. This is not a rare cartridge. It's not even. It's like it's not a rare cartridge. What are we doing? I like. There's probably more sculptor's cuts than like. There's probably more than Stunt Racer on on eBay, right? I mean, there's probably a lot because a lot of Nintendo 64 games aren't very rare. But Johnny, what the fuck? I'm I'm scrolling through eBay. There are dozens of cartridges for sale right now. Why is this? A, all right, there's all right. There's maybe a dozen. But why is this a thousand dollars? A thousand dollars for the loose cartridge? I realize it's because people need it to complete their set. But hold on, you, hold on. But a lot of these people aren't set collectors anymore. This is the generation moving like. These are the people, and like GameCube, these are the guys who should be moving into like investor not caring about full set stuff. So why the hell does anyone care about Sculptor's Cut? This is not a good game. This is not a classic game from your childhood. It has no historical significance, really, other than being expensive. Please stop it. Uh, It was such a a garbage piece of shit game that they let Blockbuster just have it. (laughs) Yeah, this is this is the craziest thing so sculptor's cut to be clear um let's say in like 2006 this was like 50 dollars, and back then people were like why are people spending 50 dollars on sculptor's cut this fucking nothing game for this garbage console and like n64 had no clout back then but it's gone from 50 dollars to a thousand dollars loose and well, it's like, oh, well, it's a rental exclusive. And hey, remember Clay Fire was a game on the Super Nintendo, that system we all like. So this must be kind of cool. But so is Super Bowling. And Super Bowling is probably, I'm not even going to say probably, is definitely the better game. Uh, Yes, I, I'm, I'm just going to agree with you. Sure. Um, also, fun fact we learned about Super Bowling. Super Bowling is... This it's a port. It's maybe not a port. It's like an updated thing, but it is kind of the same game as the Super Nintendo game Super Bowling. They came out seven years I apart, mean, but they're made by the same company and considered the same game. Fucking nuts. But, yeah, Sculptor's Cut is also just an update of Clay Fighter sixty four. So it, like these are still always updates. Uh, so I don't like. I man, get me on the does it count on Sculptor's Cut? I realize it, it has you know, more fighters or something like just maybe, maybe sculptor's cut doesn't count. Let's just get rid of sculptor's cut. Either way, who cares? It is the worst. It is. 
Oh, like I, Johnny, I have a loose N64. So I, I mean, like I'm, I'm sitting here. I'm, I've got I've a terrible game collection. Okay, I've got a loose Game Boy set, a loose Super Nintendo set, a loose N64 set. I have the most uncollectible stuff in the world. Like obviously, I have a lot of the good complete in box stuff too. I just don't have all the garbage complete in box. Um, like I hold a loose Nintendo 64 game as someone who has collected fucking 300 of these things, and I'm like, man, this thing really doesn't feel collectible. Like, something about it, like, the it, like N64 games, like, something about them just feels, like, more childlike and, like, toys. Like, I don't know, like, fucking a Nintendo cartridge, like, NES feels like, oh, this is a fucking piece of hardware right here. And, like, the little rounded corners on the N64 card, it's, like, kind of small. It's got, like, a rounded label. It's just like, yeah, look at this, this stupid little cartridge. I hate that. Like, N64 boxes are fucking amazing. But the cartridges suck balls. To spend a thousand dollars on one of them, Johnny, when it's not even like some some Zelda Majora's Mask not for resale thing. I don't get it. Anyway, we've. I think most I, people I mean, can no. agree, but I I don't. Maybe someone's out there who's like the number one sculptor's cut fan and thinks it should be even more expensive so, than it is. I mean, maybe, but that was. I mean, Tyler, it's so rare. There was only at least twenty thousand of them made. There are. Fewer Monaco Grand Prix on eBay right now than Sculptor's Cut. Loose. Uh, I mean, obviously, that's a more common game complete in box than Sculptor's Cut. Like, so, like, I almost understand. I, I'm, I, maybe I'm not even going to, I mean, I'm going to complain about complete in box. But we're going to put complete in box aside. Maybe complete in box is, it, it's not overrated enough to make this list. The cartridge is overrated enough to make this list. Yeah. Um. Also, this game was never, like, fully completed. A bunch of the... Uh, fatalities or claytalities were not added hey the hobo cop from clay fighter 63 and a third wasn't added into this because of controversy so in some respects it's even a lesser game than than the one that this is the uh update update you know air quotes to yeah this everything about this game i hate all right i think that's an easy pick for this thing um all right johnny i gotta I, how, how we're only an hour into this episode we can keep going on overrated stuff Oh, shit. Are we an hour in? Let's go. Let's go. Uh, Johnny, I'm going to say... Oh, let's get into the sealed market. Um, Johnny, yeah, A seals. Games are overrated. <laughs> I'm, I mean... You know, we could talk about that. Sure. In terms of sealed games being overrated, so... I think sealed games were probably underrated from a condition standpoint for a long time. Yes. And they exploded okay. out of nowhere, sure, and became this whole crazy, like the object doesn't matter anymore the grade matters kind of thing um but there is something to a sealed nes game in fact i think a sealed nes game is fucking awesome because if you buy complete in box nes games you're always missing inserts you've got you know dented uh flaps you got like wear on on the the flap where it opens even if you buy a really nice complete in box nes game like it has wear, it has problems, and you could piece together your things, but it takes a lot of work to put together a really nice complete in box game. Um, and even if you get like the most, the best everything, like just shoving all of the shit back into an NES box is really hard. Just because like they're they're those things are perfectly packed with the baggie and all the inserts in the manual, it's just like hard to put it back in. Um, and like a complete in box game it, or a sealed game. It will have everything and it will all be in perfect condition. And after condition has been undervalued for so long, just getting like the perfect condition thing in a sealed game, like it makes sense that it, it's went from this like two, three X premium to this 10, 20 X premium. Like I kind of get it, especially for NES. What I don't fucking get is like, look at a console like the Wii U or something it like there's no difference it's just shrink wrap over the complete in box game like nes there's a big difference between the average complete in box and a sealed game wii u is fucking nothing it's a millimeter of shrink wrap so like what are we doing here guys like fucking switch i bet there's a switch game like like a sealed zelda in perfect condition probably sold for like a thousand dollars at some point like what are we doing guys oh it's the first print oh great it's the same thing it doesn't even have a fucking manual there's nothing in that box i yes <laughs> Agree? Uh, look, you're yes, uh, and I agree with. So the other thing I agree with, and I think people might um, not realize I agree. Yeah, I actually think that they were underrated for a while, and that I think objectively having a sealed game is kind of cool because the just the knowledge that you don't have to mess with it, and that that you know everything, everything that it's going to come with, and you don't have to worry about dumb issues like, well, this particular print run 
may or may not have come with this insert. Some did and some yeah. didn't. You don't ha- you don't have to care. You, you don't have to care. Leave it sealed. You will never know. No one can ever fight you. You can just they'll be like, do you have everything? My game is sealed. It came like this from the factory. It is perfect. And no one can fight you. And the end. It's it's uh, in that sense, it's glorious. Uh, like in some ways, I wish my brain would have thought more about that when I was collecting games and just said like, yeah, just like all your best games, just make sure you have them sealed because you don't want to worry about all those posters or what print runs came with posters because it was inconsistent. And this is a battle that I fought for a long time. And I, I know people are finally coming around to it, especially as they open games and things aren't in the games that they expect to be in there. They're like, oh, this should have a poster. This one didn't. Why would that happen? Things happen at the factory, guys. Print runs are a real thing, and even a run may, they may not change anything but the inserts or by not adding an insert. And you would never have to worry about that, Tyler. You would never have to worry. Though, then I, my brain would probably be like, well, buy an open copy too because you want to like handle the, the the fiddly bits and see them. Oh, yeah. Uh, which I is mean, like problem. complete box is way more fun. And like then you could go yeah. into things like the internal component variants and date codes and like like just go crazy with all the complete box components. Like there's only so much you could tell about a sealed game from the outside. And I think that makes it less fun in a lot of cases. Um, And especially when you go into like something like an NES game, which is so complicated, like a lot of times you can't get the, the true first, first, first print by just looking at the outside on a sealed game. Like you have to go and like start opening shit up. Um, Yeah. Gate codes and stuff. You'd never know if you don't open. Yeah. It's there's good and there's bad. Do we, we ranked the most collectible consoles. Like, I'm, I'm never going to complain about Nintendo. Like, everything about Nintendo is amazing because there's so much complexity to it. Like, and talking about, like, condition, like, I understand the premium for sealed games because condition at NES games, like, all these different components. Uh, I get that. It's, it's the fucking, really the modern stuff. And even, like, like, a PlayStation 2 game, let's just say. Like, I kind of think PlayStation 2 sealed games are fine. Like, they, a, a lot of them don't have big premiums. Like, I think that the security seal on top is kind of cool. Because that is something that, like, if you're just collecting PS2 games, like, you don't, like, you almost never have the security seal at the top. And when you have sealed games, like, there's, like, that little extra bit. It's almost like a spine card for the PS2 games that you don't get unless you collect the sealed ones. But when we get into, like, the Nintendo Wii, the Wii U, the Switch... Like, we're really talking, like, there's no difference. Even fucking Genesis, there's no difference, and there's no conditional difference either, because these aren't, like, amazingly packed games from the factory. A sealed Genesis game it just has a manual flopping around in that case. It's not in mint condition. It's just the same as a complete oh. box Genesis game. I've opened, uh, I opened a, a Haunting starring Polter guy a couple of years ago, and, like, the label was peeling up, and that was a sealed game, and it was like, like, I if I graded it, that would be like, it would be like a 5.5. It, it was like... So, like, a sealed Genesis game isn't anything special, except for the fact that it has the shrink wrap. And so the thing that gets me, the thing that puts it into the overrated thing, when you get to the games like this, like Sega Genesis games, like a Nintendo Wii game, if you buy the A seal, and if you don't collect sealed games, the seal grades go A++, then A+, then A, and then everything that's complete trash. Uh, So when you're putting, like, you know a 10x premium on a thing because it has the shrink wrap and it doesn't even have like the mint shrink wrap like what are we putting the premium on because the components are the same as the complete box for those games so yeah a seals i think are just just fuck them like just remove them from the seal game market let's just start at a plus and everyone throw everything that's below that out unless it's one of these games like a nintendo game where it's like the the premium is because it's also a mint complete in box game on top of having the seal. But if it's a fucking Wii game, just throw it out. Yeah. So my favorite thing is uh, that people still use CIB to mean cart instruction and box, and they'll 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 still put that on even disc based games. But uh, you could have a sealed game, and it couldn't like even if you're using that acronym uh, aside from like like pretending that cart and disc are the same thing. If you've gone that far. You may not even have instructions. You can't even get there. No inserts. So boring. It's just, it, it's very boring. Like, sealed Switch games are one of the most boring things I can think about. I 100% agree. As someone who just, like, has a bunch of sealed Switch games, just because, like, I yeah. bought, like, I buy all the Nintendo stuff as it's coming out, but, like, I haven't got around to playing, like, the, the Super Mario 3D World, whatever, the Bowser Fury. Like, I, I have a lot of just sealed Switch games because I have them. 
but like there's if they feel so unspecial especially because they don't even have they don't even not only are the components inside not mint like genesis games like the components in a mint gen, uh, sealed genesis game are not mint but like there's no components in a sealed switch game it's just the shrink rat it, yep. but i can't even Super complain boring. about this because every switch game is going to have perfect shrink wrap because yep. they're tiny and i think they have good shrink wrap on them but whatever i we're talking too much about shrink wrap shrink wrap is crazy shrink wrap is overrated the end. Yeah. All right. You what, know what, what else? Let, let's let, let's just cut everything we just said. Shrink wrap is overrated, Johnny. I think the if it's something where the condition matters and like you get like the mint game. So whatever. If you have a fucking NES baseball that's shrink wrapped, like, and then there's like that mint black box baseball inside, like, yeah, that's fucking awesome. But the shrink wrap itself is overrated. All right, we got there. We, we did it. And uh, so. Uh, how do you feel like if you have like a 9.8 cib game that's more impressive than a sealed game right no i mean no because from the the nft marketplace and when i say this i just mean like the the caring about games in terms of numbers and pop reports and all that from that sense like the sealed game is automatically better than the complete oh, box yeah. game so. i'm not i'm not saying i'm not saying valuable i'm saying is it more impressive that something that was open and handled still got a 9.8 uh, especially see like given. when you get into grading like the person who has like a 9.8 super mario brothers 3 which i don't even know if 9.8 complete in box exists uh, i don't think it does um but like that means they pieced it together probably and so that's less impressive because it's probably wrong in some way that we're unaware of like they, oh. they got like the wrong chip like the chips are only from the mexico factory but but this uh this insert was actually a japanese factory thing like something that we'll never know well i mean yeah we'll never know so I don't know. All right. Anyway. So uh here here's a hot take. Tell me uh, tell me about this one, Tyler. Oh, we missed one, Johnny. Oh, I'm sorry. Didn't realize we missed one. This isn't the uh, also that's all right, we'll get to I'm just cutting this. But uh <laughs> we got one more, Johnny. Um I'm I'm saying fucking whatever's available being for sale is overrated and man this applies to the high-end market and i'm sorry i talk about the high-end market it's just really easy to keep on top of like heritage auctions and stuff because there's only so many games that come up for sale whereas on ebay there's a hundred thousand auctions that end it every day it's just really easy to keep on top of graded stuff but the first time anything's available or the, when something comes up for sale on Heritage Auctions, it's very easy. So you will get a better deal on like Nintendo World Championships if you just find one for sale by a collector than if it comes on Heritage Auctions. Because a lot of people bidding on Heritage Auctions are just like Mr. Moneybags who doesn't have time to you know go talk to stupid collectors because they're little people. Uh, but whenever something comes up on Heritage Auctions, if it's the first time or if like just people don't know what they're looking at, things sell for premiums that kind of shouldn't sell for premiums in my opinion and the perfect example of this is the recent pc auction where prices prices weren't nuts they were talking like hundreds and some low thousand dollars i mean thousands of dollars for <laughs> pc games is maybe a little nuts but there's some good nuts it's nuts there's some nuts all right all right yeah there's some nuts prices here but it, we're not going like i don't know sealed nintendo black box sixty thousand dollar ridiculous stuff but they had a, a PC auction and it was like, it was hyped up as like all the best PC stuff. And I look at it and it's like, none of this is the best PC stuff. And so some of the stuff they had, they had multiple game of the year versions of like Starcraft, multiple game of the year versions of Diablo, multiple game of the year and multiple game of the year versions of Unreal Tournament. Again, a uh, game of the year, Age of Empires, a budget re-release of Warcraft, a budget re-release of Madden and a shareware Doom. And if you look at, literally any item in this auction like none of it is the best thing i'm all about having the best thing and like having a game of the year diablo is not the best thing also to be clear like i bid on a lot of this stuff. like i'll take a game of the year diablo because i realize i'm not gonna get a sealed first print um but like then you still ha it's like the stuff still sells for like a thousand dollars the fucking craziest one was like madden and i realized like madden's a meme but john madden football for the pc the budget re-release, so the Slash re-release, which is a company that bought up old IP and re-released them with shitty components. So uh, if you had a game with like a cloth map and Slash re-released it, it would have a black and white manual and no map. That's the kind of company, yeah. like it's a Majesco of Yuck. PC. So the Slash re-release of Madden on PC, this is an Apple II game 
ported to PC, re-released by a budget PC company, is sold for fourteen thousand dollars. <laughs> Like what? What the fuck? So I I almost understand if it was a sealed Apple II one. If it's like the piece of history, like I don't even care. It could be like it doesn't have to be like the first variant with the TMs and the R's, like whatever Apple II version. If it's just like the very first thing and it's sealed and it is a piece of history, fucking whatever. Yeah, if you're the sports guy, go pay fourteen thousand dollars for that. But to pay for, like, the budget fucking re-release just because it's the only sealed copy of Madden available? And then, like, these people go into these groups and they're like, oh, yeah, but you're never going to find the Apple II one, so you got to take what you can get. Well, you got to take, you got to take the budget PC fucking for, just get a complete box, what are we doing? I, so, I don't <laughs> yes, power, whatever's please. available is is overrated, Johnny, especially if it's not the best thing. And I think it's, this affects the sealed market because... A lot of times, finding the best thing, Johnny, is really hard. But you know what? Maybe something being really, really hard to find is why it should be worth $14,000. And not because, oh, it's the only Madden I could get is the shitty budget PC one. Okay, I agree. Uh, And then the other one, uh, so Shareware Doom. Uh, Shareware Doom, like, isn't really a thing. Uh, Like, there are a dozen different versions of Shareware Doom but the most iconic one is the small box one. Uh, so I don't know. It's like maybe nine inches tall and like a centimeter thick. Uh, so that it's a version and it's just got like a couple floppy disks inside that that have the first episode of Doom on it. And a sealed one, which is not like crazy rare, sold for seventy two hundred dollars. And this is something that, you know, in the modern day is is probably sold for like a thousand dollars. And so Either someone thought they were buying a sealed Doom incorrectly, which is probably what happened, or because this person is only buying, like, the graded stuff that's available, they're like, oh, well, I I can't get this graded, this is, I can't get a real graded Doom, so this is the only Doom I could get, is the shareware version. They bid up the shareware version. And I, it, it drives me nuts that, like, I, I think, like, a sealed Doom should be, like, this grail amazing thing in the sealed market because a just a registered copy of Doom is pretty rare and a sealed one is super rare. Uh, but for, like, the shareware one to sell for $7,000 just because it's the only thing that you can get that drives, that drives me nuts. It's not the thing, Johnny. It's not the thing. It's not the thing. That is a favorite saying of Collector's Quest. Yeah. It's not the thing. Don't buy it if it's not the thing. Or at least pay appropriately. So, yeah, I mean, like, I went on eBay and just, like, looked, and, like, a couple of them have sold for, like, $1,000 recently, so I don't, I don't know. Heritage Auctions is just a madhouse sometimes. And then sometimes I look, and I looked at, like, there were two of the, those first print Mega Mans that sold, like, decent complete and box ones, and they sold for, like, less than 500 bucks. Graded! What? I like and Heritage Auctions, Fantasy- I'm like, what? I, I should have gone and bought this! That, remember that Final Fantasy that sold? Yeah, <laughs> you Final were telling Fan- me that last time. John- I'm like, What? Price what is, what is update. Happening? There was like a really, really nice Japanese Final Fantasy on on Yahoo. Like talking so like insane. crispy everything, like all the right pictures taken, like high quality photos. It sold for like like eight hundred dollars. It was like a thousand uh, or what is a hundred thousand yen, ten thousand yen. What it was like eight hundred dollars, which is more than the recent sealed NES one went for on Heritage Auctions. Johnny, you should have bought that sealed uh, Final Fantasy. Who cares I if it was a low grade? You would have loved it. Didn't know. I but, mean, I would I would have been um, on that if, if I'd for seven hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, when really, this is you know but. just me not knowing anything about the sealed market at all. All right, um, Johnny. So this is not overrated. This is in the middle. I'm saying. So you okay, were because this is okay. So this is not overrated. This is just uh, properly rated. So what either... does that mean if it's in the middle of? Oh, so uh, this is a both? Kind of. Johnny, either okay. cartridges are Explain overrated yourself. or complete in box is underrated. And this has had a massive correction in the past four years. And I, it's not big enough. So, yeah, I mean, I did. I, we did a whole episode on this where I did a price evaluations and like what 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 some sealed or what complete games cost versus the cart and when you should buy. The complete one, even if you're going to part it out. I mean, just, just don't part it out, Johnny. What are you talking about? No, I mean, you should. I, I because, did, because, I, sure. I, but 
I did that just to show, just to illustrate, like, what are you going to spend $80 on a cart for when you could buy, spend a hundred and get the CIB? That's, in, that's stupid. Don't do that. I, I don't think there's a ton of games like that anymore, but I think there are a lot of games and especially I think the ones that it really gets to are the, like the random weird uncommon stuff, like probably Hagane before it like really blew up and became a thing. Um, but you'll see. So the example I have, Gun Knack, is a four hundred dollar cart and an eight hundred dollar complete in box game. Like Gun Knack, in the upper echelon of kind of everything in AES, it's an amazing game, uh, pretty rare game, and it's double the price to get a complete in box. Like the cartridge is the durable thing that stood the test of time, and the box is the thing that would have completely disappeared off the face of the planet because it's a cardboard box, and it's only double. And every time I see stuff like this, it, and I kind of. Uh, I don't only do this with boxes. I I kind of multiply the lesser thing to get to the greater thing. Um, and so I think like two gun net cartridges versus a fully complete in box gun net complete in box. That doesn't make sense. Obviously, the complete in box. There are fewer of those in the world. There are much fewer than there are much fewer complete in box gun necks than two copies of gun net cartridge. And so another thing, uh, let's go back to that PC sale. A uh, a sealed first print Half-Life that was signed by the development team, including Gabe Newell, sold for like $1,200, which like deal of the auction compared to all the other shit that sold. And like a first print Half-Life is like $200 now. So six regular copies of Half-Life or a sealed one signed by the development team. Yeah, the sealed one in that case is going to fucking win. That was a fine deal. And when I do that with complete in box games, the complete box game comes out like nine out of 10 times as the much better thing to buy. I think yeah. uh, some games like, especially recently make a lot more sense. Castlevania. We just talked about that. Castlevania is still a $30 cartridge and now like $400. If you want to hang tab, probably something like that. Like, yes, there's this 10 X premium, obviously super Mario brothers and clue clue land and whatever have these huge complete box premiums now. Um, the rest of it, I think a lot of the cartridges just don't make sense right now. Even even at like a 3X premium, I don't think cartridges make sense a lot of the time. Uh, and just a quick update. If you need a game to post for Easter, buy the Japanese version of Gun Knack. <laughs> what? Just, just God, a little aside. Not I'm paying attention. I'm I, I just looking up Famicom Gun Knack cartridges. <laughs> well, we were talking about gun neck, so I looked at the prices and I was waiting till you got to your stopping point and I was just like, by the way, you should like go look at this. Uh here's the thing. So I struggle. Like eh, this is something I go back and forth on and, and tell me tell me if my in my head is wrong. You said, okay, well the cart is the thing that st stands the test of time, but is the cart the most important thing? So that 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 was my standpoint for a long time. Um, collectively, like, no. <laughs> so collectively, the box is the most important thing because that's the thing that didn't stand the test of time. Okay, but in, in a world where people also want to collect and play, theoretically, um, like, okay, that, you, yeah, we collect the, the things for a shelf and then we play them on our computers and emulators. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, look, I, I or, agree you with know, that, but on I mean, your fucking I, I think analog NT with the SD card, FPGA, whatever, whatever people are playing video games on. Yeah, but yeah, but they're still playing on these things and they're still buying all these rigs and these fancy setups so they can theoretically play their old Nintendo tapes. Um, like, why? Why does an analog even exist if all we're doing is shelf collecting? I, you tell me, Johnny, because we like the. I don't idea know. I don't know one better. Any I don't know one modern stuff. No, like I'm not doing that. That's not for me. But like um, I'm not. So I, like I'm not, I, I I'm like not the idea of playing just, my games. Johnny, I'm just asking but questions. If I have a like I've I'm look I've got what is it? I got I've seven complete in box Super Mario threes. If I wanted to play Super Mario Brothers three, I would load up the ROM because I don't want to open the box. I don't want to do damage to the box by opening it up. Like repeatedly correct. opening up a game that I want to play all the time. Like I'm not, I'm not opening up my fucking answer. Ninja Gaiden. Yes, I uh, play look, and I agree. And uh, look, uh, the thing that pains me the most is like when I didn't know I had manuals. Like I'm like I don't know if I have mail for this game. I have to open up every single Nintendo box. Just like all right, well let me just like do points of damage to every game I own over here. That's <laughs> yeah. great. Just fucking the worst. Uh, anyways, um, 
And, and I don't know if I, I believe that, but that's why I go back and forth. It's like, should the cart fetch the premium? Should the manual fetch the premium? Should they be equal to each other? Like, theoretically, like, what I would want to see on this gun knack, if it's, like, $800, $900 game, I would want all the parts to be about $300. And then, like, then, actually, and then still nice CIBs, if a nice CIB is $900, it's still the better deal, because you're probably going to find all the other inserts that don't actually command any value to the CIB price, but command individual price on you know, when you, when you're trying to buy the correct pieces for it, like, oh, it's got the right Nintendo power insert and it has this baggie and, you know, it had, uh, if it had a poster, like, I, I think a lot of those things, the prices don't, they don't add up into the CIB compared to the three main individual components. So CIBs are just usually a better buy. Johnny, our opinion. first thing on underrated is inserts because there's not enough of a premium on having a hundred percent complete box I, game right uh, do you want to transition into underrated i was now? trying to do it naturally yeah. but we could do it okay. not naturally too yes well i i'm i give the give the people a clear break that we're moving on from okay from what i'm saying i uh, i still do think inserts are underrated and i'm not talking about manuals i think manuals are being maybe a little underrated still and then a lot of times overrated because i i have you seen I've seen people asking sky high prices for manuals because of course I'm still looking but I don't think the demand that everyone thought was going to happen from these the game grading companies suddenly taking CIB games happened as much I don't I don't think that happened quite as as hard as everyone thought it was so I see a lot of manuals especially overrated your shitty condition manuals stop stop doing that like stop asking for a premium on on your like trash manual with the video store sticker on it that's not what the cib people who are grading it are looking for so stop thinking you're gonna get you like don't ask for a premium on your 2.5 manual stop it um but the inserts like i was talking about before the baggies the correct the correct um, baggies baggies are the most underrated thing in the world Oh my god! I missed out on an eBay lot. There were like it was like sixty NES baggies, and I got I, I bid like eighty dollars. I'm an idiot. I should have bid anything for this. It went. It literally went for like hundred twenty dollars. It was like two dollars for an original baggie. Like, no, how many of my games have baggies, Johnny? Less than half of them do. It's the rarest NES component. The rarest, most yeah. generic NES component is a baggie. And yep. fucking dog. Oh, the I would have paid three dollars a baggie, easily. Right when you break it down like that, if you could put a bag in each one of your games for three dollars, like Absolute. you would just be doing it, right? Yes. So why didn't you bid more, you fucking fool? This this was like right when I was like in the middle of collecting a bunch of other shit. Oh, this is uh, the worst. I hate when you get in these like Sophie's Choice moments. You're like, I should, but I can't really right now. I've gone too far. This this was like right when I was <sighs> finishing up my loose NES set, and I was just like, ah, complete in box components. Yeah, maybe one day. Oh, I Johnny, the day has arrived. And it's like, oh, I wish I had those baggies. <laughs> Oh, I thought this was recently. I was like, oh, man, no, I cannot no, no. believe. I would bid anything recently. Johnny, I just bid, I bid oh, crazy yeah. just I, all the time now. I don't even look up prices. I'm just like, I hope the underbidder knows what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, that's um, that's crazy to me. Yeah, I, I'm I'm so glad that wasn't now. That would have been, that would be daggers in my heart. That's like a, an auction you missed. It's like, Tyler, how? Yeah. You're a fool. Why didn't you tell me? I'm only going to bid $80. I'm like, if that was yesterday, I'm stabbing you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Makes it makes more sense than it was a no, little was while years ago. ago. Yeah, um, yeah, baggies, the like the correct inserts, warnings, like warnings have numbers too. Like sometimes it's like stupid. Just having all of the right stuff is completely underrated. Your manuals like in your boxes, sure, those are always going to show up, but all that other stupid junk and posters. Posters completely underrated, and your your print may not even have the right poster, or even come with a poster. But just being able to get a poster, and like people, the value they put on underrated. Even if people ask too much money, the way people value them into the price of the games, still an underrated thing. Tell me if you think I'm wrong there. No, I think I think almost every insert is is kind of underrated because. You look at like a a little Samson and like the little Samson, a little Samson cartridge is a really coveted, cool thing. A complete in box little Samson, really coveted, cool thing. Johnny, what is the rarest part of little Samson? It's the tidal wave insert because that tidal wave insert comes with like one or two games because this isn't a generic tidal wave insert. It's like the dash five or something tidal wave insert. So it's like a unique insert 
too little Samson or like it's too like maybe two title games. Uh, so it's kind of the rarest thing. And yes, there is a huge premium on it, but like it's the best like in in some crazy alternate universe. Like it's the best component of little Samson from some kind of collecting sense. Uh, so I don't know, like if someone's paying like four thousand dollars for a complete box of little Samson without the tidal wave insert, like kind of what are you doing? Like why are you spending all this money for like the for to get like eighty percent of the way to the finish line? In my opinion, for something like that, no idea. And Thanks. like there, so there are games like Earthbound where like people are really into like getting those hundred percent complete. Like when you sell an Earthbound, like you got to make sure you have the scratch and stiff. You got to make sure you have the strategy guide type stuff. Um. But I mean, some games, people just don't care. And like, this is something that's driven me crazy on the, the grading CIB market for a while. Because like, the nature of graded CIB is just like, it, we can't 100% verify every insert to every variant. So we just don't care about inserts. That's the stance that- And that's insane. Stand. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. It, that That's a real problem. And also- <laughs> They will just incorrectly verify inserts, and that's going to be a problem. There, there's just not enough info there, and I like I understand the need to grade CIB games, but also I, I don't. I mean, I get like if your company's reputation is staking on something that is just like common knowledge and isn't like a known thing. Like, all right, if you can't do it, like I kind of like I'm not blaming the company here. I'm blaming the people who. In like 2019, 2020, people were sending in all these fucking complete and box graded Mike Tyson's without the Mike Tyson letter. Like, that's not like some insert. That's so st- that is like yeah. an iconic insert. And people are just like, yeah, but it, it doesn't even get impact the grade. It's just like noted on the back. So I don't need to send them in. It's like, what are we, what are we that's doing? So stupid to me. Yeah, that's really stupid to me. Uh, agree. Like, if a game, like, if it's an RPG, you know, it had maps. Okay. So just like make sure the maps are in there. <laughs> Let's yeah. not be ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like hey. Chrono Trigger and all that, sure. Yeah. Um, like, and like some all of these the basic things, ones. Like these have premiums now. Like the Mike Tyson letter has a big premium. The Chrono Trigger uh, registration card is a huge premium now. Um, so like they make sense, but like that's only for like the upper echelon of like most well known games, I think, have that yeah. really big premium for stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Uh well your ogre battle on on the PlayStation One, are you gonna make sure that you you have those memory card stickers in there? Not complete if it doesn't have them. All right. I'm sure my ogre battle is not complete then, Johnny. Don't worry about it. All right. I didn't. But so, yeah. All right. We, we got interrupted here for a second. Before we move on, uh, I know we're talking about all these these hot, cool, high-end things. I think another thing that uh, doesn't have enough of a premium, which I hate saying this because it's something I want. But you look at, like, the the matte Marios that and, like, a lot of them are graded and selling heritage auctions and all that now. A lot of them are missing the posters. So it has a specific Rob poster. And you talked about posters. And this poster came with all 17 of the original Black Box games. So it's not even like an insanely rare poster. It's not like a Super Mario Brothers poster. It's a generic Black Box poster. And a lot the a lot of the copies that are up for sale are missing this poster. You're selling like a $10,000 video game. And you're not going to buy like the $200 poster to go in it. It's madness. It's um, gross. And it, then it's also, gross and it's... Yeah, like I could not imagine having a copy sealed up and graded, and that and just not having that in there, I would be so annoyed. Yeah, the, the, the I mean that's why graded CIB drives me a little bit nuts. Uh, and the, the other thing I wanted to tell, like, it doesn't have to be like we're talking about like a two hundred dollar Rob poster. Like, it doesn't have to be that. The inserts, I think, that people don't care about specifically, like people care about, you know, the Taito Wave insert for Little Samson. That's not like an unknown thing. I just don't think it has enough value even for what it is. Um, But like your movie ticket variants that you were collecting, I bet you paid a premium for like almost none of those. Like it was 100% just searching for the ones that still had the movie ticket in them. Yeah, mostly. There's a couple that have like that people kind of know, but not really. And even then the premium isn't that high. And so, like, I don't know if this is underrated so much as, like, if you just search around, you can get something, like, it might not even be an insert that comes with a game, but you could find, like, the cooler version of a game with some insert, like, I don't know, like, some Xbox 360 game that comes with, like, a cheat code little thing or, like, an Xbox Live trial. Like, you can go find that stuff, and it will just, it'll be the same price, because people don't value, like, the cooler versions of games, basically. 
I I agree. And I, I think in like modern collecting, the cooler stuff is going to be the dumb, weird inserts, the DLC. If they still have the stupid little square sheet that has the DLC in there versus the ones that don't. We just did an episode on 3D glasses. Like there's hardly a premium on the versions that have glasses versus don't, especially in all the modern stuff. So make sure you get those because all that stuff totally underrated. I think we should talk to Josh Byerly and do an episode on cool modern variants um, because I don't know this stuff really well, but I know Josh probably fucking does because I think Josh of like, and I talk all, we, we share dumb poster or post back and forth on, on stupid variants that we look at. But Josh is the king of this. So like not stupid stuff that like games that people like beloved games. So the ones I'm thinking of are like Marvel Ultimate Alliance has the cheat code inserts on like Xbox 360 mm-hmm. and maybe PS3 and the comic. Sure. Well, is that if a variant buying, though? The comic? Yeah. Yeah. There's there's one that I'm pretty sure one on the Wii is a variant if it comes with the comic. Um, okay. And then Modern Warfare 2, the first print of Modern Warfare 2 on Xbox 360 has an errata insert. Like they they had like the, the amount of players supported in System Link incorrectly printed on the back. There was a misprint and they included a little errata insert to correct it, which is like, mm. who cares? But I mean, that that is something that is like hard to find. But like when you find one, you're probably not going to pay a premium for it because it's just a matter no. of digging through like the literal 2000 copies of Modern Warfare 2 on eBay right now. I think that would be a fun yeah. episode. We should talk to Josh and do it, though, because he's going to know a lot more than us, I think. Did you just suggest a guest? Um, ooh. We should be a guest on Josh's podcast and talk. Have him just Because like, he's got video. Like, we don't have video. Like, Josh could just, like, he could just, like, I was going to say pull up images of it, but he probably just has it all sitting behind him. So he could just, like, show off all his cool stuff to us, and that'll be an episode. Okay, so it can be a video episode, and we'll just do the shitty audio version only, and we can, can just be dual published on both our channels. Okay. Perfect. Yep. Let's just rope Josh into doing some work with us. Yeah. Um, all right, I don't know Johnny, if that's going to work, but sounds good. Speaking of some cool variants that we're talking about, other on the underrated list, uncommon variants and first prints. And look, I know, look, uh, fucking your, your Dr. White Mega Mans and your Hangtab Castlevanias have exploded in the past few years. Like this, like people are looking for the cool variants now. Um, what I'm talking about specifically is every other game, like not your Mario's and Zelda's and Mega Man's. I'm talking about fucking Sonic 2, Atari Space Invaders, Sim City. There are these things where like there's like these twenty five fucking dollar games. So- Sonic 2. What's Sonic? T- I'm talking about Sonic 2 is probably twenty five dollar game now, but there are six hundred copies of Sonic 2 on eBay, and some of them are the first print. Even if you don't know what it is yet, just like go through like a hundred listings of Sonic two and try to figure out, like, see if you can find the differences in the box, like look for changes in address, changes in TMs and R's changes in copyright dates. Like try to find the, the hardest to find version or like the earliest version, because you're probably not going to pay a premium on a complete in box Sonic two or something, or a, another one, like Atari space invaders. Uh, the first print of Atari space invaders. If you look at the front of the box, uh, it doesn't have the white text at the bottom. I think that's the first print of Space Invaders. And if you look at the hundred copies of Space Invaders on eBay, like ninety percent of them will be later prints, and like only a couple are gonna be like nice complete in box first prints. And no one gives a shit about Atari Space Invaders. So if you're in the market for it, why not find the cooler version? I agree. I think that yeah, stuff is one hundred percent. Like that's, yeah, I, that's I mean, what I've been doing for years now. I love doing this stuff. I mean, and we, that kind of goes into like a modern collecting like I said, with like the the dumb variants or the one that has like the cool sticker on the front because it was from uh, this store had this promotion in it. Like, yeah, I love all that stuff. Be sure getting the cooler versions, unknown variants, uncommon inserts, all that's all that's the best. I mean, and the thing is, like, it turns it, it's like turning it from just shopping addiction, like, back into a hobby. Like, if you're just buying, like, I don't know, what are we buying? Uh, like, fucking Switch games. What do people buy these days? What are the video games, Johnny? <laughs> uh, Switch games. Uh, games is- I mean, I don't, I, there's probably Switch variants, but yeah, there's Switch variants, because you look at a copy of, like, Breath of the Wild is a very obvious one. But, like, there's, there's, like, four different versions of Breath of the Wild, just looking at, like, the UPC revisions, because they had things like patches that they automatically wow. integrated in the game. So, Tears of the Kingdom with, 
you know, that the Walmart one with the, that comes with the sticker, but only if you bought it at Walmart and got the black scrolls or whatever. Perfect. Like Target exclusive, all these fucking Target exclusive. I don't, why, how does Target get so many exclusive video games? But sometimes you don't even know about something like this Duke Nukem Forever. We talked about the 3D glasses, but if you went through 50 copies of Duke Nukem Forever on eBay, you'd be like, oh, look at this one. It has a badge and a Target exclusive. If you go through all the Metroid Primes on eBay, you'll you'll come across, There's you'll find, first of all, You'll be like just browsing through Metroid Primes. You'd be like, wow, there's like 12 different versions of Metroid Prime. But then you'll realize like, oh, the Target exclusive one doesn't come up as often. Uh, it's true. I mean, I, I think people I mean, people listening to our show probably like and are interested in variants. So probably already do this. But yeah, underrated, uh, especially because I think a lot of time, like I think I'm like the coolest guy in the world for getting this stuff. Like whenever I find like something that's hard to find, that's like, well, there's no price premium. That makes me feel like the coolest guy. Like when I'm buying SimCity and I get like the first print Macintosh version for the exact same price as like the other 700 copies of SimCity. And it's just because I was staring at eBay enough. It's like, fuck yeah, I'm, I'm the fucking greatest game collector in the world. Love that stuff. And then and I like no one cares, but it's not about other people caring. It's about enjoying your hobby. <laughs> so here's a fun variant that you could go out that, that no one cares about. Um... Go ahead and uh, buy that Toy Story with the big weird box, and uh, be the guy who collects that. Be be the guy who gets that version. Isn't that Common. like expensive? That what are we talking about? We're talking about the Genesis thing. Yeah, the Genesis one with the big weird box, where not a lot of there's a brand new one on eBay right now that you can go get. It's it's going to go for a bunch of money because it's sealed. But um, yeah, be, All right, let me, be the guy I'm who looking up big. Big weird box Toy Story. So for people who don't know, this Genesis toy, this is the we the weirdest thing. You don't know where this is from, right? I don't. I suspect it was like Costco. Okay. It's the, that, oh, that, just... that would make a lot of sense. It's the size of a big box PC game. And then in the middle is like the exact box art for the Sega Genesis game. And it's got this huge, thick blue border around it. And it's like, like an inch and a half, two inch thick box. But it's just Toy Story for Sega Genesis. It's the craziest thing. And I've been told that there was nothing else in it, just just the game. That is a very Costco thing to do. Um, Costco yep. made some big box uh, uh, PC games of small box games, and inside the big box is either the exact same contents of the small box, or sometimes the small box itself would be in the big box. Yeah. So the other thing that this... Uh, it's, uh, Costco, though, might have also blistered it instead of doing this, but maybe. This is just... I mean, I don't know, so don't quote me on this. Um just speculation, but also the edges of it are like the red box, like the cardboard box edges. So it looks the only the blue border. It's weird that they didn't just blow up the picture to the whole thing because the rest of the box looks like the Genesis box. I mean, I think if you blow it up like that, people are like, is this even a Sega Genesis game? Why is this so big? So they had to keep it like the size of a Sega Genesis game on the front of the box. Yeah. Now, and to be I I should be correct. The top and the bottom did not get the top flap treatment. Only the only the long sides. Okay. All right. Anyways, anyways, I, but to your point and what I was getting at is there's a bunch of big dumb weird variants you could go buy, cooler editions. And it's like stuff like this that no one even gives a crap about mostly. That you could go buy. You could just like if you're gonna collect it, buy the cooler version. Like you know, so people can walk into your room and be like, "What the hell is that?" I know what Toy Story is, but what is that Toy Story? I mean, it doesn't even have to be something that people this would recognize. Dramatic. Like, you could even, like, look at what the goes for big premiums in the sealed market, because in most cases, it doesn't go for a premium on the complete box market. And I'm talking, like, fucking PS2 era stuff. Like, obviously, some of this NES stuff is crazy now. But... God of War, there's like a variant that like doesn't have like a Dolby Digital logo on the back, and that's like the cool version of God of War to have. I fucking guarantee there's no complete in box price difference in that, because in the sealed market, where there's only like a hundred copies floating around and people are trading the same copies about, that's a much smaller market than like the three million copies that are going to be out in the rest of the world. And yeah, there's probably more than 100 copies of God of War on planet Earth. Wasn't sealed, there like a saying. copy that came with a demo disc too? Uh, I mean, there is a God of War demo. I don't know if there was a copy that came with a demo disc. Or is that a different game that came? I can't remember. I mean, there are a lot of games that come with demo discs, Johnny. I don't know. 
No, but this was like a weird one because the demo with like the cardboard was like the size of a PlayStation 2 game. It was like uh, sealed to the back of it. I can't remember. Okay. Anyway, I, um, I just want to reiterate this because like sometimes I talk about like this God of War fucking Dolby Digital variant. L- like I know what that is. Like I learned about that by reading it on a Wada case one day. But I don't just know these variants. Like, just go on eBay, especially for common games. I'm telling bring up like 500 listings, literally 500 listings, and just look at all of them. You will notice something different and interesting on these mass-produced things that are produced over the course of months and years. There will be differences, and it will be interesting. Hopefully, it'll be interesting to you, because this is the most interesting part of collecting a mass-produced piece of shit to me, is finding all these this dumb minutia to get excited about. Whatever, there are people who collect little pieces of cardboard and they worship sports players. Like, we're not doing anything weirder than anyone else in the collecting no, world. No, no, we're not weirder than... <laughs> are we weirder than sports card people? I don't know. I think sports is really we- weird because it's it's the hero worship of real people. I just... I, it's Something about it is a lot weirder to me. Like, I think, like, love in, like, Mario and Zelda, like, these icons, like, these fictional icons, and, like, even comics and stuff, like, that's great. But when you're like, fuck, I'm just the biggest Ken Griffey Jr. fan. I just want to spend $200,000 on a Ken Griffey Jr. card. I love Ken Griffey Jr. It's weird because he's a person and he's alive and he's not your friend. Like, Mario's my friend, Johnny. I've had experiences with Mario. We've been on adventures together. Ken Griffey Jr. I've watched on TV and play sports. It's there's a there's no connection there. Okay. so spend. I don't know. It's I think it's weird. All right. I'm not fighting you. I was just curious on your take. Overrated. Uh, collecting things related to real people. I, I I kind of agree. I think autographs like and I like autographs on some of the stuff, but I think people who just collect autographs of anybody because they are famous, I think that is like 100% overrated and also weird. But some people love it. I kind of like autographs. I've been getting more autograph stuff. Um, like I, I think if you care about the person and the thing, that makes sense. But like, I would not like, I could run into a famous person like, like Lil Wayne or something, right? I don't care about Lil Wayne. I don't want his autograph. Like, I would tell someone, oh, yeah, I did. I ran into that guy. That was cool. But I wouldn't want his autograph. I mean, yeah, uh, sure. <laughs> I, I agree with that. Um, uh, yeah, I, I'll, yes, All right, I'll just say I agree. Um, a weird part, uh, going back to this, this PC auction, I'm just saying this because this happened like yesterday, but uh, when this sealed signed half-life sold like everybody in the chat this i was watching get the greg games was like shitting on it they're like oh it's damaged you couldn't even grade that oh dude it'd be impossible to grade oh it wasn't signed and and witnessed by the jsa or whatever the oh this is pure trash Uh, i only collect autographs by like celebrities meanwhile it's got like gabe newell's autograph first of all like Half-Life is the game. It changed everything. It changed first-person shooters, which in the late 90s was the most important genre. It, like, is a huge part of adding narrative to video games. And fucking Gabe Newell's autograph! He made Steam! He is synonymous with PC gaming, which is probably, like, the biggest gaming platform outside of mobile phones. And everything's just on Steam now. Like, there's, there, there is no PC gaming. It's just Steam and every, like, all these other shitty companies are like, oh, we want to be Steam too because we want that hot 30% cut. And there's like, oh, I only want celebrities. Like, fuck, who's, what's Half Life? Anyway. Uh, <laughs> you're not upset about this, clearly, but also I agree with you. Um, yeah, like, I don't know. Steam. <laughs> uh, and, you know, specifically Half Life, it, it put RPGs to bed. As the thing, and uh, changed changed the market forever. So, and that's Gabe Newell. If you if you don't care about that, I I don't know what you care about. I, I don't understand. I mean, I get not. I, I totally get not liking autograph games because yeah, it's just letting some guy scribble on your sure. game. I get not caring about autographs in general. But like in the realm some of autographs, are- you should want from like PC people. That's like Gabe Newell is up there. He's a cool autograph to get. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I said, unless you care about them. But, like, it's just also, he's just important to gaming. He's so important to get. It's like, oh, I, well, I don't like Zelda. Just, like, but Miyamoto is so important. Like, what are you talking about? Like, yeah. What, get, like, if you for, could, let me talk it. to you, John, Johnny Donkey Kong. I don't care that you don't like monkeys. Donkey Kong is, like, the most important shit on planet Earth. 
Um, probably like water and love are more important than Donkey Kong, but you know what I mean. I, I barely do, but go on. Okay. Johnny, underrated game. Now now I'm getting worried that we're going to have a long episode. <laughs> Japanese video games. Also, just so everyone knows, the underrated games are just going to be everything that Tyler likes. Uh, so, because mm-hmm. everyone should like what I like more. Well, we talked about dumb variants on modern stuff. That's stuff I like, so. So you're going to expand upon this, Johnny, but Japanese video games, very specifically like, Japanese versions of Japanese video games, Zelda, Mario, Chrono Trigger, like, okay, I understand if you don't want this to be the main thing you collect, even if it's just, like, the little side thing, if you collect fucking Zelda Amiibos, why the fuck don't you have a copy of The Legend of Zelda? Like, you bought this uh, Tears of the Kingdom Amiibo for probably $25, Johnny, the original, the very first, even an early variant of The Legend of Zelda, it's like, $40 40 fucking dollars on the Famicom disk system. The original Super Mario Brothers boxed, cardboard box, complete, in like decent condition, $50. It, that's you can, it's like double the price of a cartridge now on NES. And it's the original one. You, go, you get on Super Famicom, it's fucking crazy because the genres that we think are like exciting and expensive, like RPGs, are like the most common shit in Japan. So you've got... Final Fantasy, Chrono Trigger, and then you got your Super Mario RPG, Super Mario Kart, Super Metroid, Super Mario World. These are all like $20 or less. Cardboard box games with better art. I I understand that they're common and Japanese people kept stuff in much better condition and there's more boxed copies. It's not even underrated just in terms of price because I understand some of this stuff is really common, but the amount of people who even collect a little bit of it. Fucking Johnny, if you have the Zelda Amiibos, Get a copy of Link to the Past. It is $25. Just go get one and don't get it off eBay because that's where the premium, those are like importers that are charging a thing. Just go directly to Japan. Use something like Baiyi or Zen Market and just like get a box of them. Just like buy 20 of these games. They're going to be, you're going to, they're going to be so fucking cheap. And yes, you're going to have to spend like $60 to ship that box over from Japan, Johnny. But it's fucking worth it. There, there's such good add-ons to your collection, especially, like, the really iconic, original, like, Mario, Zelda, Metroid-type stuff. Okay. I agree. Let's do that. Let's, let's, uh, let's do, do an episode where w- we go and we just buy Johnny games from Japan. I, I would love to do that. Because I, yes. Okay. And we're going to get you all the best versions. We're going to get you good deals. And we're not going to buy this eBay yeah. stuff. Because whenever we talk about Japanese games, you go to eBay and you always quote like some ridiculous price. So we're going to show you like how cheap some of this stuff is from Japan. Teach also, me and te- teach the listeners that it's a perfect episode. Yeah. Uh, to be clear, like Japan, uh, this is a quote from someone else. Uh, shout out to whoever showed me this quote. But someone said Japan, someone from Japan said J- Japan is like having its 2020 moment where like people are spending nutty money for like things and people think they're getting grails all the time. Like there's a speculation boom in Japan right now, but it is still like, even since everything has kind of like doubled since, you know, the madness a few years ago, uh, like everything is still really cheap, especially if you want just like a copy of something. Sure. Let's do it. All right. Whenever you want to do it, you tell I'm me so when excited. we're doing that episode, uh, I'll do it. That That's um, going to be an after dark problem. I don't think people are going to want us to, to hear us like clicking through Yahoo Japan and like go into okay, Wikipedia sure. to find out like how do, how do I type this in Japanese correctly? Well, I, I I mean, like the format would be like, how do we how do you do this? How do you go? Go to Google Translate. Here's what you do. And like put this. No, you know, Google Translate will basics. always lie to you. What you do is you go to the Wikipedia article and then there's usually a footnote at the bottom that gives you the correct spelling. of Tyler, the save it for the episode. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so yeah, you just said this, all this about Japanese games and I agree, but I want to add on to something because, uh, here in America specifically, and maybe Japan our Japanese collectors don't realize this too, but Hey, there are other regions and I, I think underrated are games from other regions in general, including Japan. Get out. And it's not just like, Oh yeah, there's pal games too. We know, but like Korean specific games, games out of South America. I don't think that we appreciate these games enough or go hard enough at them or like look at the exclusives because there are plenty of rare gems over there. All the Japanese competition games that we have no, like, I mean, aside from you, no one else is talking about really 
uh, just all the rare PAL games that are out there that no one knows, oh, th this was common here, but in PAL, it's very rare. So finding it and also don't buy the German copy because that's the most common. What you want is the one that has this code on it. Instead, like there's so much of that that we completely ignore. And just uh, there's a whole other aspect of collecting. And by ignoring all the other regions on the earth, um, we we just we're missing something. And I most people don't care and aren't even thinking about it. And you're just they're like, oh, that's cool that you got that pal thing, I guess. And you're like, okay, I mean that's just like a very large chunk of the world, but all right, yeah, sure, let's just minimize it. I get it. All right, I'm and I'm gonna don't... disagree with you trying to tack this on to Japanese games because Japan is probably the most important country when it comes to video I games. I think things, regions like Brazil and Korea are very interesting, but I think they're niche. Uh, wait, so wait, I think we're it not, is... stop, stop. What? We're not talking about whether it's important. We're talking about if it's underrated or not. So, all right, I'll give it, maybe it's underrated, but I also it's, think. It's, no one even rates it. So how, how could it, how could it so be anything such a, but underrated? But it's such a niche thing to want to collect Korean releases of games. But I'm, but. Look, if we're talking about if we buy a bunch of shit because it's rare or because you haven't heard of it, there's also exclusives that did not come out in Japan that are in PAL territories and also did not come out in America. I mean, so sure. it's not like so it's not like Japan is the like I, I know you want to be like, oh, Japan is the fatherland. It's like, fatherland. OK, I, OK, cool, but not really. OK, there are other places did a lot of the most important video games originate there? Sure, but not all of them. And there are a lot of video games. And that's what we do here. So what what are we doing? Like, you, you put such a steam on Japan, but you forget that there are other places. And even you, a seasoned collector, who, who even goes into other regions, is currently underrating it on the show. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, European video game developers are garbage. Um, oh, well. No, <laughs> no um... I think that collecting so forget forget the fact that we're talking what region we're talking about whether it's Japan or otherwise collecting from outside your region in general is a very niche thing so I think it is understandably a niche thing to do which you're seeing as underrated but I'm seeing more as like what would give someone the impetus to want to collect Korean releases other than that they're, they're just rare yeah. But like, well, if you like, want to collect something that's just rare, there you have so many options. Sure, you have you have a lot of options. But you know, if you want to stand out, like put a few, like spice up. I'm not saying like de dedicate your life to it, but you could you could be a very niche collector who goes into that. But just knowing about it, and I'm not saying like oh, just get into the Korean specifics because that's very hard, or like trying to get stuff out of Brazil. Like go get all the tech toy stuff. That's also very hard. But you could be like, oh well, I don't have. All, like, let's just go back to Nintendo, your favorite console. Like, why don't you have a copy of Devil World? Okay, I, yes, I, I guess you could get the Japanese version. Yeah, you could get the Japanese version. Yeah, you could get the Japanese. You could get the Japanese one, but like, I, I don't have a good example off the top of my head. Like, we could go to the Super Nintendo and uh, something less important, but you can pick a game that's there and be like, oh well, you don't have this. Why not? Why don't you have Days Before Christmas or something like that? And you're like, oh, it's rare, and it's also a it's Super rare, Nintendo expensive. game, and it wasn't, it wasn't released in Japan. Why don't I have this? Because I got other priorities. Because I got, <laughs> there are Nintendo games I don't have. What am I gonna do? Gotten. But I'm just saying, in the in the world in the world of cool things, there are a lot more things out there. All right. Um, like, like, look, if you went and bought 12 FIFAs because you're a set collector on the Super Nintendo, there's not really 12, there's like six. And you did, then you're like, oh, but the Japanese stuff, I don't, I don't want to get that. Or I don't want to go get pal copies. It's like, look, man, all the FIFAs you just bought are not as cool as a bunch of the stuff you could have just got in a pal region for the same amount of money. Not all well, of it's the pal expensive. FIFAs are probably going to be more common. So those aren't interesting. FIFA games are interesting because they're rarer I mean, in I, North I, America. I, I don't know. Do they, I mean, they should have FIFA. It's an international organization. Yeah, they have. I'm FIFA just assuming there. they're more common, I pal. I don't know. Yeah, and I think there's actually like a FIFA. Like, oh, if you are a FIFA uh, collector, like for um, 32X, there's an exclusive FIFA that we didn't get here. Um, I think that was a European only copy. And then 
um, in PAL, there's a FIFA 98 that you could get that didn't come to America, but I think that might have also been in Japan. Can't can't remember off the top of my head. The point stands. There are more regions. There's cool stuff out there. If you, like, just expand your horizon. I'm not saying, like, go get everything, but there are cool games. There are cool games out there. All right. I'll, I'm with you on the believe- games. I'm not with you. Uh, you know, maybe I'm with you on regions in general being underrated because I think so many people just default to American and just like never even expand once. Um, I, I, so maybe it's underrated, but I don't think it needs to. I don't think it should be mainstream, I guess. Like, I understand Why? collecting stamps. If you're collecting stamps, you're going to Sam- collect American stamps because you live in America. You're going to collect British stamps because stamps originated from the UK. But, like, collecting Somali stamps or, or like, South African stamps is, like, that's a really niche thing because that's, a, like, what, like, you got to be into something niche to get into that to begin with. Okay. Um, also, just Anyways. the USK logo and like the Peggy logo a little bit because those are colored now too. But the USK logo is that's a death knell, Johnny. I will never own a game that has a USK rating logo just, on it. Just who who cares about that? Just go, <laughs> like buy Nintendo and Super Nintendo games that that didn't come out here and like Genesis okay. games, and you will get a lot of cool stuff. You can just and I said Genesis, but I meant Mega Drive. All right, don't don't at me. Okay. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, USK is the German kind of ESRB, and they have like the big. They've got like a road sign of a logo. It's like a, it's awful. It's like a square inch, maybe bigger, uh, and it's just like this huge green or this huge yellow blue, uh, right. thing that depends, completely clashes with the de- box art. It depends which region you're you're in in Europe where you where you get the yeah. different logos, but yeah, they're all they're all awful. All right. I mean, I, I think they're supposed to be. I think they're supposed to stand out and be hor- horrendous so parents notice them. Uh, Johnny, we talk about this a lot on the Collector's Quest podcast. Computer games are underrated. Oh, never mind. Who cares? <laughs> to the point where, like... They're not They're not underrated. Look at what people are paying for old computer games. This is not underrated. Computer games Especially are underrated, since, Look at what people are paying. Go to retrogames.co.uk, sort by price, and look at just like how many Commodore and Spectrum and other games are like one oh, pound. Wait, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you even bring those things up when you're like regions are not underrated and you're just going to talk about all these computer games that you can that you buy all over the world? No. <laughs> um, Absolutely not. Well, I don't. <sighs> Absolutely not. Regional releases of games that I would buy from another region. All right, let's go. We're going back to European stuff. Uh, so Peaceful has like the only copy in the world ever of the Korean Fire Emblem on GameCube. Uh, That's not Path European. Of Radiance. You right? said we're going back to European, and then you went to Korea. It's a, they're the same thing. There's just two different parts of the world. They're, oh, you, you just oh, you're take right. a plane you're... in different directions. Uh. Tyler via collector's quest Europe and Korea are the same thing. So if I was buying fire emblem, I would either get the American one. Cause I live here. That's what I mainly collect. I'll get the Japanese one. Cause it's a game that was developed in Japan. What would bring me to the Korean one? It is the coolest version. I'll give it that. I mean, he apparently it's like unfathomably rare and like, he's the coolest guy in the world for having it. But like what, what draws me to that? Like, I, because it's just a version of a game that I would just normally buy somewhere else. If there was a Korean exclusive, I could understand being interested in that kind of stuff. How interested are you in the Matt Stu- Sticker Seal Mario? I'm, I'm just interested in that, show, but like not as much super, as... But I it's mean, just a version of a game that you can just go buy. Yes, I mean, I agree. I mean, first of all, that like, it, you put mario on something now and it's like instantly like a tier stuff so no. i mean all right i mean like people want if people are collecting anything from europe they're probably like oh the super marvelers european version i guess that's okay let me get one of those funner boxes but whatever small pal boxes really cute love them they're pretty what good form factor i mean nes nes just has too much wasted space what's going on there yeah, and then you have to like, then you have a dumb other thing you have to collect. 
that stupid styrofoam. Make sure you have the right styrofoam, guys. There's like three different types. You know what? It, all right. You know what it is, John? You know what it comes down to? When it comes to things like multi-platform, multi-region, multi-variant games, I'm always looking for like the single best one because I don't want to buy, you know, four copies of the same game. Unless it's like some game I, I really love or is really important, like a, like a Super Mario Brothers uh, like a Ninja Gaiden, like a Sim City, like I own a lot of copies of some of those games, but for the average game, I'm just looking for the one version I want to buy, and nothing is going to draw me to like the German version of a game, like the rare, uh, you know, Scandinavian NES release of a game over I mean, just like about, all right, let me just get the NES version that I have what in about America. Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider on Saturn, but like Tomb Raider is a really important game, so I have seven different copies of Tomb Raider. I know, but the the. The first version, the earliest the first release, version no. is the European Saturn version, as it's everybody like definitely knows and recognizes and cares about. Ah, I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm just fighting your you against your own arguments. All right, I do okay. enjoy that we went to computer games, and my example was immediately, but British Commodore and Spectrum games, <laughs> yeah, they're so <laughs> underrated. <Yep. laughs> yeah, real solid work. <laughs> um. You know, going back to that website, so retrogames.co.uk, this is just, I, I fucking love, I think I was pr promoting these guys like one or two episodes ago. Like the guy who runs that website is just such a gem. That guy knows so much about computer games and he sells things at really good prices. But you go to that website and sort by like highest price and there's probably something like really stupid at like the top. You cut off like the top two, like computer games of that era. And like, I realize he doesn't have everything, but like top out at like two to three hundred pounds for like the absolute one of a kind rarest shit and it's all stuff it's like completely rare like adult games and like games that were sold in baggies by hand to someone that you've never heard of like stuff you can't find but like the rarest of the rare stuff like tops out like 300 pounds for that stuff and like the average good stuff is you know like 20 to 75 pounds for that stuff it's just, it's an entirely different world from console games. And so many people, and like, forget this British garbage computer stuff that I'm talking about. Just like regular big box 90s PC stuff, like the big stuff. That has come up a lot in recent years. Um, it's like, I think like like Half-Life and Unreal Tournament, those are really getting their due more these days. But the greater PC market, I still think most people look at and they're just like, well, I don't, I'm not going to install a floppy disk. What, this is crazy. Like, the point is, Johnny... You're not playing your fucking games, so why does the platform fucking matter? That's my thing. If these are all just trading cards to you, which they are, and yes, yeah, sure, all right, yes. All right, I mean, a lot of us, yeah, we play our games, we've got like this portion of our collection we play, but yeah, what about the other 85% of your collection, dude? You're not fucking playing 85% of your collection. So just buy computer games. You're not going to install them. I get it. You're going to get them on GOG. You're going to get them on Steam. I literally own games. I own Diablo Hellfire. That I spent like $100 for this. It's an expansion to Diablo 1. Johnny, I want to play it. And it's like $10 on GOG. I spent $100 on this already. I own it. But in the computer I want to play it on, I don't have a CD-ROM drive in it. So I'm just waiting for it to be on sale and I wouldn't install it even if I had a CD-ROM drive in it. I'm not going to install like this 90-year-old software and figure out how to get it running on like Windows 11. I'm just waiting for it to be on sale on GOG for like $3 because I don't want to pay the full $10. So even games I already own, I'm just too lazy to go install them. So I just buy them digitally. So if you're just going to play everything digitally anyway, or if you're not going to play it at all and you're just interested in it from a historical perspective, why does it matter that it's on a PC or a Macintosh or a Commodore 64 or an Apple II? If you don't even know what an Apple II is, you can appreciate, I'll even go back to it, John Madden Football, the original Madden game. There's, It's just a, a, a piece of historical interest. Just download these You're games. Not... Who cares that you can't play them? Who cares that there's no set? Look, we... most you're, you're preaching to the choir. Yes, they're just trading cards. Just all right. Just once you accept that, your your life is going to be a lot easier. Well, why do you think I own all these dumb Halloween games that I'm completely incapable of playing, and they may be in languages I I don't speak, even if I could play them. Okay. Johnny, you can't play a box. Okay. So if you're buying nope. complete box games instead of just cartridges, like you're already buying trading cards. Yep. Um, man, trading cards are yeah. so convenient. Oh, God, I wish we were collecting so trading cards. So much easier. Oh, I well, hate like, it. Oh, 
Man, or, does or anyone just play? I know books? we got some people. Uh, I think it was strange on Discord started collecting magic more seriously recently. Someone was someone's talking about it. I feel really bad if I'm, I'm forgetting who was talking about it, but uh, oh, magic's just it was, the best. Uh, was it was it uh, Shane Data and or oh, Shackfish? Maybe okay, yeah, but yeah, just like thinking about. But I think Strange was also there. They're they're so thin. You could put them in binders. You could even grade them and and like have them presented, and they still don't take up any space. Uh, let's go back to overrated. The Lord of the Rings One Ring Magic the Gathering card. There's currently a two million dollar bounty for a trading card in like the set that is being printed right now. It's a one of one Magic card, and there's a two million dollar. I mean, it's it. it's one of one because it's got a print. Uh, that same card is available. Just without the serialization on it. So it's, yeah, it's a one on one variant of a card, which is normal in the trading card world, I guess. Um, Two million dollars. That would make it like by far the most expensive magic card ever, right? That's like more than an alpha no, PSA so Lotus. Far, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, like, look, remember the Magic 30 stuff in which we panned and like didn't do well at all? Um, If you remember the whole Magic 30 snafu. Now, those cards, because they had such a limited print, now. Now they command premiums because they just no one bought them, and then Wizards uh, kept them or is distributing them slowly. So yeah, if you can get your hands on them now, those are like the premium versions because there's just not many exist. They're just rare, so people want them. Cool, so right? this wondering, uh, were you going on further? No, this wondering, like I. Uh, uh, Rudy made a video on uh, Rudy's made a bunch of videos on this card, but like this is where you really have to look at a collectible. You know, Reserved Investments made a video on this too because it's, it's such a funny thing in the collectibles world right now. Is this one ring card? And like to be clear, there's they're selling boxes for and they're going for like four hundred dollars. And there's there's tens no, of thousands. No, four hundred four hundred and eighty dollars. Four hundred and eighty dollars, and in and like they have like Lord of the Rings cards for Magic. It's not even like a legal set to play. It's just like a collectible set, right? That's legal and modern. Oh, legal and modern. And modern. Man, Magic is the weirdest game. And Commander, yeah, set up. which right. is the important thing. Anyways, go on. Um, yeah, and then in one of these boxes, there is a card. It's the One Ring Lord of the Rings card, and it it looks. It's got like Elvish text on it, and it's shiny. You know, they got their holographic one of one chase card. And, and like people are spending tons of money and the whole gimmick is to try to, you know, crack all these boxes and, and find this amazing card. And like auction companies, like like big collectibles dealers, are. I've been putting out bigger and bigger bids to find the one ring card, uh, you know, this and you look at it on like, what is it? It's not even a, it's not even a card in the Magic the Gathering trading card game yet because the card doesn't even like basically exist. I don't is this set out yet? Yeah, it's out. It okay, so it's out now, but it's a marketing gimmick. It's like the Queen's Golden Wii that we we have in, in our hobby. It's like, it's nothing. It's something that was completely made up to literally get people excited to buy something. Whereas, like, an Alpha Black Lotus is a completely, like, naturally collectible thing because it is rare and powerful and iconic. This is just, like... Yeah, this is a Wizards manufacturer. put up a bunch of banner ads for this card, and suddenly it's worth two million dollars. Like objectively, this is the wrong thing to collect. Yeah, this is one hundred percent just a manufactured collectible that people are kind of interested in, for good or ill, mostly ill. Ugh. Um. All right, I don't think I need to talk about uh, PC games anymore. We, they're just trading cards. Just think of your PC games as trading cards. It's fine. I like playing PC games. I like playing old PC games. But, you know, if you don't, I don't care. Just buy a copy of Myst. Buy a copy of SimCity. Those are super iconic games that cost nothing. Nothing. They're so cheap. Um. Okay. What else you got? That in the same token, Johnny, historical games are underrated. Uh, and you know what? It just goes hand in hand with PC stuff because there's so much, like, random historical stuff, especially from, like, the 80s that was pioneered on the PC because they were it was just so much more powerful than consoles at the time so there were more possibilities um, All right, Johnny I collect historical stuff so that's yes I think it's underrated okay alright let's get into more hot takes Johnny unlicensed NES is super yes, underrated and you know what unlicensed NES almost has always been underrated Disagree. it's the coolest fucking it's proper- shit I think it's properly rated. No one cares about it. Mm. So, uh, 
Yeah, that's all. Look, that was your argument to me when I would bring I, up something. I'm like, is this underrated? You would say no one cares about it, so it's properly rated. It's it's a niche. Like, no one like getting, cares. you know, your oh, European no, exclusive. A niche. Oh, it's I, a niche. I thought niches don't but count. But I think it's one of the most interesting niches, and it's a niche that will probably like never happen again. Oh, yeah. The, oh, look, look at this. I mean, you might as well just tell me how interesting all of those, like, you know, bargain CDs are. You know, in, on the Target rack for computer games like that, the the five dollar CD games. They're not trying are to those pull. All, so those are Johnny. just like shittily developed by anyone who could just put one together, put it in a box, get packaged, and get it into a store. Except like these ones, they're you know they barely got into stores. You know what? John, you tell me some that them, you have like Zuma and Peggle and and fucking whatever photo hunt game. You like you tell me you have like some rare like first print thing of this thing they made like 7 billion copies of and you got like an interesting version and you can like sell it to me. I'd be like, "Yeah, your collection's fucking cool cuz no one has that." So yeah, I would think that's cool if you if you collected $5 PC games from Target. If you had like uh, the right one, not not if you went to Target. And but just would you say would you the say show. they're underrated? Would you say they're underrated or just a niche thing that no one cares about? I would say that they're a niche thing that no one cares about, and I would say unlicensed oh, like NES unlicensed is underrated. NES there are people who plenty of people care about unlicensed NES, but I oh, think yeah, too many. <laughs> yeah, boomers do exactly. Yes, uh, boomers don't even count anymore. Game collecting boomers, boomers care about unlicensed NES, and but I think even. You know, even over the past 20 years, a lot of people just wrote it off as like, ah, that's the fucking weird stuff for weirdos, which is what makes it great because a lot of it is a lot rarer than the licensed stuff. And so all right, this is this is my my real point. The concept of an unlicensed, quote unquote, video game, it exists from basically Activision on the Atari up through the NES and then it fucking stops. And all the Activision stuff on Atari is super common because Activision games were super popular. And then you get to Super Nintendo and there's one unlicensed game. And what's in the middle of those two things is the NES. And it's got like this really rich library of unlicensed garbage. And it's like the only console that is as interesting as it is. And a lot of people are still like, yeah, but it's not the licensed stuff. But it's... It's like Nintendo was trying to put up guardrails to defend themselves from the bullshit that happened with Atari and the crash. Exactly! And that's why it, it becomes, like, this almost unique thing. Like, yes, there are unlicensed games and some other stuff. You know, like, there's unlicensed Genesis games. Like, a few. And they're not super rare. But, I mean, Johnny, when you think of the unlicensed set, like, first of all, it's all the rarest NES games. Like, the fucking Panesians, like, the porn games, if you don't know. Like, there's three porn games for NES that were put out by a company called Panesian. Like, Hot Slots and Peekaboo Poker and, and Bubble Bath Babes. Bubble Bath Babes. I was going to say Mermaids of Atlantis. Um, and like those have always been super expensive, uh, you know, like thousand dollar plus Nintendo games, always seen as like the upper echelon of stuff. But like no one's collecting this stuff. And part of the reason is like there's just not a lot of stuff, not a lot of this stuff out there. And but I think like even the most common stuff, the most common unlicensed stuff, you're thinking like your raid 2020s or whatever. If as many people were collecting unlicensed as collect licensed, like Raid 2020 would just not be as available as it is now. Because I think the only reason some of this stuff is available, and I'm talking to your, your secret scouts and like all your weird, rarer unlicensed stuff. Death race. And sure. Like some of this does sell for a premium, but I, I don't know. I think if it had as much interest as I think it probably should have, I think like there just wouldn't be enough of this stuff to go around, even for just like the uncommon stuff. Probably. Mike, I can agree with that. And I, and from like a pure, like I realize like rarity, whatever, like it's easy to get a rare game. Nothing more common than a rare game these days. But like Johnny racer mate challenge Two, who has that complete that one just came up on a video game stage. Someone just like, just like a random guy had one. He's like, this looks like the forum where someone might want this. And like he had like a bunch of shit related to Racer Mate and a Racer Mate cart, but he didn't have it complete in box with all the documentation because everyone who owns a copy of Racer Mate Challenge Two, they have probably a couple of the hardware accessories and some of the documentation, but no one, like no one, has that game complete in box. I think I've seen one complete in box Racer Mate Challenge Two ever, 
because it, either someone like has everything that it has was sealed or like they threw away the box and lost some of the documentation and accessories because it's the type of like exercise equipment that someone bought as a fad and stopped using after three weeks. And it's the coolest thing. It's such a unique thing. Are you All sure? Right. I don't know. It's got variants. There's racer mate variants. Johnny, what's the rarest NES game? Is it Nintendo World Championships? Is it stadium events? Is it garage cart? Is it there's like a homebrew? I'm thinking of like homebrew games that were released in like quantities of like 10. No, Except it's I Papillon could... Gals, that, Johnny. It's but... the Satchin game Papillon Gals, which fucking no one has. We're talking like I two know. collectors have this game. But Tyler, I that like the reason we have these guardrails is because then I could go make make a game and then only have one, and then be like, that's one of one, and what's to stop everyone else from doing that? You know what? Go do it. I love it. I love it. So, make it, so, I think that this, going back to sports cards, I think, like, sports cards have diluted themselves by making too many one of ones. Like, the concept of just, like, a random one of one isn't interesting, because there's too many. So, Uh, 100%. Subjectively, like once you start doing like, oh, I just made a one of one game. Isn't it the rarest Nintendo game? Like, sure. But we live in a world where that hasn't happened. And there is it's maybe not objectively, almost objectively, the rarest Nintendo game. And I'm not talking like no sets or anything. You take all the guardrails off. Just the rarest Nintendo game. It's probably not Mahjong. It's probably not Nintendo World Championships. It is maybe Papillon Gals. And if you don't know what it is, no one knows what it is. This is like the most obscure Sachin game. You look at the Sachin set lists, this is the most likely game to be missing from a Sachin set list. Because it, w- it was like, uh, I forgot what this was, if this was NES God. Like someone basically in like the early 2000s like went to Sachin and got them to like produce a bunch of games specifically for the collector's market. Like they're just like, hey, you made all these Famicom games. Can we uh can we get some NES games of these? And they bought like, you know, like 30 copies of each game or something. And for some reason, Papillon Gals wasn't a part of that. I gotta go check on the story of Papillon Gals, Johnny. Basically, there's no copies of this game available. It's the porno version of Galactic Crusader, which is fucking amazing, because Galactic Crusader is already like maybe like one of the most obscure NES games. Like you ask someone to name every NES game, Galactic Crusader is like top 10 games that people forget ever existed. And this is the porno version of it. All guardrails off, rarest NES game. It, it, when was the last time you heard anyone excited about this or you saw a $10,000 sale of this game, Johnny? Uh, the last time I heard someone excited I, okay. was Besides you. <laughs> it was you uh, the last time we talked about it. But All right. uh, your, point sta- your point stands. All right. Unlicensed okay. NES is cool. That's all I got to say about that. Okay, well, what's the... All right, I, I don't know. I don't... Look, you just argued for why it's cool, and I'm going to say, yeah, okay, some of that is cool. Is it underrated or overrated? I'm going to say it's properly rated. All right. I think the people who want to care about that stuff care about it. Um, I'm, I'm glad you think it's... Look, you disagreed with me on other regions. You can't have my agreement on this one. Okay. Um, all right, Johnny. I, got a, I just got a couple more. I basically was just like tossing out ideas here. Super Mario World CIB. I realize this game's like a thousand dollars, and I realize we've hyped it up on the uh, Collector's Quest podcast before. It is the most hyped game we've ever hyped. Uh, yeah, Johnny. It is. It's the least common, most significant box Nintendo game, and kind of the only rare significant Nintendo game. In terms of having it complete in box. And yes, you can go into your sticker sealed black box games, whatever. Uh, any version of Super Mario World is uncommon. And I think that makes it really, really interesting. Um, the only reason Super- that I would like this maybe isn't the most underrated is because Super Mario World isn't as significant as, you know, Super Mario Brothers or Donkey Kong. Um, but I, I, I fucking love Super Mario World CIB. I think it's so good. Yep. Uh, totally agree. All right, Johnny. We'll do we'll do one more thing to uh to make you happy here. I think Blockbuster World Championships two. If we're gonna talk about this fucking bullshit, uh, you I, let me type in the most collectible video games into Google and see what comes up. <laughs> like we're and talking about Nintendo be this. World Championship. Like I realize I realize Blockbuster World Championships is or Nintendo World Championships is a Nintendo thing. Like you can't beat that. 
Okay, you know what? Fuck it. We're taking it off the list. So I was going to say, like, you have these games like Gamma Attack and Air Raid. Like, who fucking cares? But then you have, like, the Sega uh, competition cartridge, which, you know, was destroyed and, like, taken back and whatever. And, like, a dozen copies are out there, whatever it is. And, yeah, it sells for, like, $20,000. Uh, but it's rarer than NWC, and it zero zeitgeist. <laughs> like... Yeah. You could go, I mean, you could go, like, if I searched for, like, people talking about it, I'd have to go to, like, probably, like, a 15-year-old digit press thread to find anyone who cares anything about this game. Well, you would probably find the old Sega Ages stuff first. But um, what's also interesting is it's attached to the name Blockbuster, which is now has some retro value, right? Yeah. Um, still, no one cares. No one cares. Um, There's so, so few of them, too. The reason I almost retract this is I typed in most collectible video games into Google and it took me to entertainment.ie and it was number three on the list. I'm like, really? Whoa. All right. I mean, maybe All people right. care about this more. Like, no one talks. About, I'd never see this brought up in like a YouTube video or anything. Uh, I, I mean, uh, the, net, the last time someone heard about this was probably us. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And Johnny's the cool guy who has one and it's uh, it's his retirement nest egg. So we got to pump that up for him. Yeah, pump, pump it up, please. Hey, um, I wanted to go back to overrated real quick, mm. and I'm gonna say the Pan Asians, <laughs> the Pan Asian games, completely overrated. Oh, get get out! Those are rare. It's so, no, I, uh, not only no. are they rare, they hold I on, think hold on, right. hold on. I I don't actually believe that, but I believe there was a time, there was a time before before the before times, and I'm like 2012 ish, um, 2008, in that range, eight to twelve. That those games, I think, were overrated, and people were like so obsessed with them, and um, that that fell off quite a bit, and we're we're not there anymore. But I think there was a time when these games were overrated, and now may have slipped towards underrated for what they actually are. But once upon a time, these were an overrated thing. Okay, I I'll agree with that. Like there was probably when I first started collecting, I probably would have put them in like the top ten things you could possibly own. I'd be like, whoa, the Panesian yeah, NES games, like, like so uh, mythical. Th- were, was that in shit that made you cool episode? Did we have these as a thing that made you cool? Uh, uh, I mean, they must the have day? been. Did we make that episode? But yeah, this we did. should we have did been up there, episode, definitely. Yeah. Panesian NES yeah. games. Yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, and see, and like even though something like Outback Joey, I think, is like rare and interesting, I don't think it's underrated. I, you know, I think not that many people care about it, and it, it sits where it should be. Oh, Outback Joey? Oh, yeah, certainly. I think Outback Joey is such a weird, weird thing. It's it's for the fucking weirdos, and some weirdos are willing to spend like a thousand dollars, thousands of dollars on it. And that's fine. They can do that. Um, and, <laughs> and speaking as two people who own it, I have a cartridge and you yeah. have it complete. So uh, yeah, uh, yeah sure. there's two weirdos. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing I think that's like super underrated. And I think is this. Do you have any other ones? Uh, if not, I'll end with this one. Uh, I do want to talk about the thing above Blockbuster, but yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, that Lunar Doll, completely underrated. Oh my fucking god. Uh, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding, come on. Johnny, the last thing I'm putting under, underrated, to- this isn't something that's forgotten, this isn't just something that's undervalued, this is something that people actively dislike and actively discourage against collecting, and the younger you get, the more you hate it, Johnny. Atari, especially Atari 2600, is super underrated. No. Super underrated. No. No. Totally what? rated. Look, how how could these Atari games sell for these gigantic prices and being pumped by all the investors no, and then be underrated? Games, fuck, like, no, fuck. Like, no, 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 no. No, fuck, it brought fuck Atari anything Atari spot- that's look, over like $200. Look, but- look, they tried to drag Atari into the spotlight and pump these games up, and people still don't care. So they're not underrated. Oh they are God. properly rated. They should be buried with the shovel that you dug them up with. Like, all those shovels that we use to dig up the bullshit E.T. games, we should collectively take those shovels and throw more Atari games into the pile and bury them. And so- I, as someone who thinks some Atari games are cool, and even played some Atari games, as far as like how cool they are, I, I think they're properly rated. And it is not like a complete Atari hate fest. I just don't think 
in the collective space of collecting right now, you're going to convince people that they're underrated. I think oh, we have well, some okay, older guys. This is who exactly we- my point. You don't think in the collective space because everybody hates fucking Atari. So, I don't think yeah, they I hate think it. Because well, everyone already hates it because it's underrated. Look, I, I think people who listen to the show, we got some older guys like myself who are going to be like, no, Atari's cool. It's got some cool stuff. And they're going to say, yeah, it's underrated right now. And I just think that to get, I think, underappreciated like a lost love, uh, you know, lost to time. Yes. Underrated. No, Johnny, there are people you look, I, I'm going back to, to what a modern collection looks like. You look at a, a video game collector, like your average video game collector. A lot of collections now just don't have cartridges. They just start in the disc era because that's what they know. That's what they love. And then like you go, you go to, you brought into like, older people a lot of them have stuff that goes back to like nes and then those people just don't collect atari still like atari's like the cutoff of like yeah all right i collect video games but let's not get fucking crazy okay look see you're bringing this up and i'm gonna counter with with playstation one playstation one underrated as a collectible in general the library sure you agree yeah underrated why just like the candidate for the greatest console ever made incredibly incredible variety and like nes is the the big nintendo breakout console and playstation is the big breakout sony console and there's an entire generation that grew up with sony playstation yeah, like okay. as being their nintendo so yeah PlayStation so is the now console. can you apply that argument to atari i mean yeah and and keep it relevant in collecting now i don't understand and that's that, well, my problem is, like, there's stuff on PlayStation still happening. It's still relevant. Atari has not maintained its relevance, really. It, oh, yeah. It's like... It's not, so it's not that, relevant. It's just historical. And Yeah, histor- but historical doesn't mean oh, underrated. I, I, I just think... But it is, because people... I, un- like, we've already talked about how people underrate, like, history and stuff, but... Okay. Uh, not well, even uh, you. You might be able to sway me. I, I think there's a scale where it moves towards underrated, but I, I just don't know if I would have put it on my list. How All about right. That? If we're to, if you're looking at like golden age, silver age, bronze age comics, you know you you can look at like the big things from each era. And if you look at 1970s as an era of video games, the thing that is like emblematic of the 1970s is Atari 2600, and people like it's. It's the golden age, and people just throw it away. They're just like, fuck it. Well, and a lot of the arguments are like, you know, video games are a storytelling medium. Nothing really mattered until you had Mario trying to save the princess. Video games are not a storytelling medium. Video games start with, like, fucking Pong and Birdie the Brain and then fucking mainframes playing tic-tac-toe. It's like calling music a political protest medium because there's a lot of bands that that are important bands that in- exclusively make like political protest mu- music. No, uh. that is one thing that music can convey. There are so many things music can convey. Video games are not a storytelling medium. Fuck modern games. Fuck how everything is just a movie. Well, fucking I would, adventure. No, fucking I would. Pong. Tyler, Those settle, are video settle down. games. They're so games. Down. I would say that I would say what leads creed- lends credence to your idea here. Uh, that it's not a storytelling medium, or not just a storytelling medium, is how I, I would phrase it. Is if you look at all the mobile games, like a lot of the mobile games are not about the story. They're about that they're more akin to Atari games than they are to PS4 games or PS5 games. Sure, I guess um, that's a how, weird, how do you guess? weird like, way to put it, it, but sure. Well, like in the fact that they're not about the narrative, they're about like specific actions and building a skill and getting good at one thing. You know, rather than uh, experiencing a story, a, you know, a sweeping narrative created by someone that engages you as if you are on an adventure, um, you know, or through some exploration rather than just like, you know, some skill building exercise. All right. Um, I'm just going to end it with some of some games I really like, Johnny. Johnny Pitfall all time most important game like one of the most important platform games of all time which was one of the most important the most important genre of the 1980s just underrated as a collectible i know it's it's super common like a lot of people listening to the show have a pitfall i don't care pitfall is amazing adventure the namesake of an entire genre maybe not maybe it's just a a very generic uh, name Uh, adventure is super good et 
Super good, super underrated, super common, even sealed. I don't care. It is, it's an iconic piece of, of video game crash history. And no, E.T. did not cause the video game crash. The video game crash was caused by a, a multitude of factors. But we, we've yeah. all blamed Largely it on incompetence. E.T., a game that is not as a bad game, that is not as bad as its reputation. But it is like this iconically bad game, and it iconically represents the video game crash of 1983. It's an amazing yes. collectible, and it costs nothing. They're so common. Just get one. They're good. It's good to own something interesting like that. I love it. Anyway, those are my Atari shoutouts. There's there's plenty more I could give, especially to like weird, uncommon third party stuff. But no one cares. Oh man, don't forget Superman wallet. So, uh, I was, I I meant to bring up Superman. The first like DC Comics game, maybe like the first comics or movie game ever. Oh, that's Spider Man. Spider Man. Spider Man Atari took seventy. The first Marvel game. The first comics game. Yes, sealed sells for a thousand dollars, and there's a million of them in nine point eight plus plus. Just go get a complete one for twenty five bucks. It's good. It's a cool comic collectible, even if you don't care about Atari. Even if you know it is just this overpriced meme in the sealed market, and it's a stupid fucking thing. Just get it complete in box. It's good. It's good. I like it. I like it, Johnny. It's cool. Okay. I mean, I have Spider Man, <laughs> like, and Superman. What do you want? What do you want from me? The Superman wallet. There's get all I don't the variants have the of the wallet. wallet. I, I I don't have. I just Superman. am not spending four hundred dollars on the wallet. That's so dumb. Uh, yeah. All right, Johnny. That's uh, that's what I put in the list. Okay. Those are the video um, games. I hope can you I, guys. Can I, can I just? I'm gonna throw a few just like random things at you, and you can tell me if you think they're underrated or overrated. Okay, just, let's go. Just just a, as a fun exercise, the 32x as as a system correctly rated in that no one cares about it <laughs> okay the cdx uh i mean that's another like niche thing for like weirdos so maybe correctly rated but also overrated because who cares okay i mean um, so all right i'm not a console guy so i kind of don't i think all consoles are overrated like some people are like well the turbo express it's the cool thing for the turbo graphics i'm like oh, fuck the turbo express Give me a real turbo graphics. Okay. Well, I was just gonna ask you about the Super Nintendo mini console. Not like not the, the new one or the No no, the old one, the the redesign. Oh, I mean they're super ugly. Do, do people play a premium for those? Do people like those? I don't know. I use one so they're really easy to RGB mod. That's the only reason I have one, but otherwise I think they're awful. They're so ugly. Okay. Some people think the super super Nintendo the uh the engineering design of the Super Nintendo, the American one that everyone thinks is ugly, underrated. I think that stupid brick looks fine. And right. purple, bold choice. Excellent. Boxed Rob. Uh, maybe overrated, because who cares? <laughs> I mean, Boxed Rob is seen as like this really cool thing. Uh, I think Big Box Gyromite is cooler than Boxed Rob. And I realize they go together, kind of. But uh, I'm just going to call Box Drop a little All bit right. overrated. Deluxe set, but not the test market edition. I don't know. What do those go for? I mean, there's so many of those. So you think that see, the thing is that there's so many of the, the quote unquote test market ones. I think the serial numbers go up into like the 300,000s. So like, so fuck the non-test market one. Just get a test market one. Okay. I'm going to say um, correctly rated anyway. Because whatever, right. get 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 boxed NES. I'm not going to call a boxed NES overrated. Come on. It's a boxed NES. I, well, I'm just I'm just saying um, strategy guides uh, overrated because they are trash. Just throw them in the garbage. Uh, no, I mean, no, that's correctly rated because it's this a niche thing for weirdos like who like strategy guides like there are some weird people who do. But I can't say yeah. overrated because I don't think a lot of people collect them or like them really. Okay. Uh, light gun games in the big boxes. Ooh, I know you think they're underrated because you really like those. But I think it's just a it's sure correctly rated because it's a niche thing and those usually do command some kind of premium. Working design games. Oh, shut up, John. Yes. Yeah, so this this is almost enough to make the list <laughs> of overrated. Yes. Um, okay. Appreciate their work. Great stuff, but. Man, like, 
we're just talking about like the one ring being like this crazy manufactured thing. Like part of the appeal of working designs is their manu uh, the manufactured collectibleness of them, and like oh we got disc variants, and oh we print our. Uh, our, our Sega Genesis manuals have an embossed, uh, or our Sega CD manuals have like an embossed thing on the manual, so it makes it fancier and shiny. Uh, so like they they they're a manufacturer collectible, and like a lot of their games are good, and a lot of their games are okay, and they have Albert Odyssey, which should not have been released in English. There was no reason to release that in English because um, Albert Odyssey it sucks, Johnny. Okay. Um, Pokemon games. Okay, so you, you uh, n I don't even, hmm, Pokemon games, Johnny, are overrated, uh, because the entire psychological thing of Pokemon was gotta catch them all, so then people buy, they, like, everyone wants every Pokemon game, so first of all, that makes you buy the same game, like, three times, which is ridiculous, like, that, it's crazy that they made us do this. Um, but then like by default, you're buying games you don't care about because most people have not played every Pokemon game. Even me, I have played a lot of Pokemon games, but like I've skipped generations of Pokemon because like they're all the same. You don't need to play them all. But I'm going to still, especially the Japanese Pokemon red, blue, green, like underrated Pokemon red and blue. What are they? Two, three hundred dollars now. Yeah. Still calling them underrated, Johnny. Those are some of the Whoa. most iconic games of all time. Complete in box Pokemon Red and Blue. You should own those. Amiibos. Fuck Amiibos. I don't understand Amiibos. They're okay. They're they're kind of correctly rated. Whatever. I mean, there can't there can't be a huge collector's market spending like hundreds of dollars on regular Amiibos. So sure, get your cool little ten dollar Nintendo statues. I I think they're very cool. I, I mean, I think they're overpriced, but I I think they're pretty cool. I think you know I think. In terms of the space they take up, if you don't take them out of the packaging, like oh. they are not worth the space they take up if you're going to own a hundred amiibos. So in that case, I would say overrated. But I mean, whatever. Buy, buy, it's like go buy your twenty five dollars Zelda amiibos. It's Zelda. I get it. Game Boy as a system to collect for. <laughs> I th so I know what you're saying. I think, yeah, I don't think enough people collect Game Boy, maybe. But Game Boy is interesting, because when we got to the complete in box argument, I think Game Boy cartridges are uniquely not collectible, because, you know, loose handheld cartridges, they feel really insubstantial. And then Game Boy boxes are uniquely collectible, because even fewer people saved Game Boy boxes than, like, Nintendo boxes. So in that sense, it feels correctly rated to me. But also, I think more people should collect Game Boy, because... NES Super Nintendo Game Boy is just such an iconic trio of, of Nintendo era. All right. Last one. And I'll, I'll let you off of this flame bait. <laughs> the GameCube. Ooh. Ooh, I was just, I was thinking about the GameCube for this episode and if we should bring it up somehow. But like the GameCube is, uh, it's a really good console. And I think like as a collective, like the boxes look cool. They're fine. Uh, but then you're going to, then I'm going to like look it up and be like, Nintendo uh, Disney sports basketball is $1,200. Unique media size. It's got some stuff going for it. Mm, I'll call it, I'm just going to call it correctly rated, Johnny. You know, like obviously the top end stuff might be overrated. Fucking like set collecting and Disney sports basketball and fucking the, the super monkey ball double pack players choice selling for $3,000. Like, there are definitely overrated aspects to the GameCube, but as a console, I do love the console and how much it represents every Nintendo franchise. And I don't think most games are too expensive on it. So, okay. Oh, I, I did have la one last one. Oh. Player's choice games. Overrated. See, overrated. In either, in either sense. Yes. Okay. Yes. There are the people. I'm, I've been one of them. Like, Player's Choice are objectively the rarest versions of most games. And a lot of, like, there's a lot of these releases that are just, like, really rare to even find any Player's Choice copy of some of these games. But both in that sense, that's a stupid, that's a stupid reason to collect a game. I'm sorry. Like, I've bought, like, really expensive, dumb Platinum Hits games for Xbox. Like, it's a stupid reason to buy a game. Uh, I'm glad you took this as I meant it to. Just, like, the ubiquitous Player's Choice, not, not specific to Nintendo. So, good oh, job. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then also, I think it's overrated in that, like, people should not accept Player's Choice for their collection when Black Label is available. Because I, like, 
the black label premium in most cases is it's nothing. Um, so it's overrated in that people think they're saving like, you know, $6 buying the player's choice and it's just not worth it. So saving the $6 is also overrated and going for player's choice. And I'm going to give you one that I think is underrated still box protectors. I still see a lot of games without box protectors. I'm not saying you need to put everything in a box protector, but I've seen too many collection photos recently where they don't have a box protector on it. And um, look, just buy a box protector. I know it's hard. It's hard, but buy a box protector. I guess maybe I handle my games a lot because I'm always moving stuff around and trying to find room and shifting things. But like, I get stressed out when I have a cardboard box that's not in a box protector. Yeah, 100%. Especially if I have my but, PC games because PC games are all different sizes, so you can't really get box protectors on it. It's just like, ugh. So I just like don't want to touch my PC games. But once you get a box protector on a Nintendo game, like, yeah, just like flip it around. Yeah, just pick it up. Yep. I, I can pick it up and enjoy it. You know, the thing I bought to enjoy, I can go enjoy it more. Yeah, I um, I feel similar to like my PS1 games. I don't want to touch them because the cases are fragile. And like, I think I would feel better if they had box protectors on them. But also the idea of putting on box protector on jewel cases makes me feel a little sick to my stomach. So I'm, I'm one sure day I'm we might get there, Johnny. One day we like because uh, jewel cases I, I see are. It. Vintage media. I mean, it's kind of similar yeah. to a box. Like you can't reproduce it. And I realize you can reproduce it, but repro- uh, new jewel cases are not the same as '90s jewel cases. No, and so, like some of the jewel cases, people just like, like, oh, I'll just go steal this one. They're not exactly the same. They don't have the same like uh, sizing. They don't have the same like uh, inner markings. There's 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 differences. And once we become more discerning about that stuff, if, if we ever do, then that'll matter. And uh, yeah. The, the weight and texture of the plastic. I realize these are like really nebulous things that you can't really like put in like you can't describe them without just like feeling and weighing them. But uh, it they're feels it's just different. different. <laughs> yep. You can't yep. buy something on Amazon and replace your PS1 games. Yep. Um, All right. But that's it. Hey, we'll get there, Johnny. I think we're going to get uh, game collecting. We'll get to a state where putting a box protector on a jewel case is a normal thing to do. I bet we get there. Okay. That's it. That's I, I wanted to throw a few of those at the end. It's a All real right. fun way to end it. Let's uh let's uh get to the collector's question. Oh man, Jim, Johnny, this is this episode's like almost three hours long. Um How? No one's, oh my God, everyone's gonna have stopped listening. No one's gonna hear about my cool Famicom game, Johnny. Oh I'm sorry. You can inject uh, I'm only here what is uh why why do I have so many Discord messages? Help, help. Uh, you probably have all the the game history ones. Daddy Mulk asks, think back to what you paid for some of the rarities in your collection and think what they sell for today. Which ones would you be willing to buy at today's prices and which would you absolutely never buy at their current prices? Oh, God. So many. I mean, just... Let me let me think. Like I probably wouldn't go back and buy Panzer Dragon Saga. Sorry, sorry, Daddy Mulk. Like I would buy Panzer Dragon Saga. I mean, I don't know. Maybe like, like maybe that... I would if I was see the problem is I just collected sets, so it didn't matter. Um exactly. like uh, so I had to buy all of them. Like if you're asking me divorce to divorce myself from what I am and was as a set collector. And that's, that's kind of impossible for me. Um, yeah. I, you know what I wouldn't have gone and paid a premium for <laughs> given what I know now is any of my, um, dumb translations from English, like English translations of Japanese games. Okay. That's not exactly the questions you asked. I but. don't think those yeah, that's not top tier rarity. No, but I mean, I just can't like, ev- like I'm a set collector. So I would just be back there. I-, I would be figuring out a way to buy them. What I would, what I wouldn't be buying is so many damn sets. You know, that's r- the real answer that has to change. And then I would have had to like pick if I wanted those games, if they were important, I would have had to been really selective. So like, if I wasn't, if I wasn't a set collector, and I had Super Nintendo to like try and answer the question in the spirit. I would not buy Final Fight Guy or Gee, however you want to say it. I would not buy that game. Okay. Yeah, I'm. Uh, when you pose the question like this, it more becomes like I just wouldn't collect like the NES set. Like I realize like NES is like my favorite console and it's the thing I would want to collect. 
but I would rather have, you know, whatever it is, the 300 best complete in box games that don't have, you know, the Bubble Bubble Part 2 and Little Samson and shit than having my loose set, which has, you know, basically every game except for stadium events. Uh, but, like, I'm, I'm trying to think of, like, the purchases that I made that were, like, painful because, like, I bought some expensive games. Like, I don't know, a, a TM Zelda. When that first became a thing, I think I spent something like $600 on a nice copy of TM Zelda. And that's, that's worth more than that probably now. I don't know. Uh, but like, I would probably like, I would, it would bother me, even though I know it's, it's the American, it's not the real first one, whatever. I still want it, whatever, whatever. I'm a fucking game collector. I want the cool stuff. Um, so even at whatever ridiculous price it is, I would find a way to get that today. Even if it's not like a mint condition copy one. Um, but something like Little Samson, like, what's a Little Samson cartridge sell for? Like, I remember buying that. I, w- I, w- I was at a pinball tournament. I remember, like, where I was watching the auction end. And I spent, like, $1,100 on it. It was, like, maybe, it was, like, like $1,150. And it was, like, one of the most, most expensive Little Samsons that had ever sold. And, like, now it's even more than that. And, like, if if I'd known going into the NES set that all the prices would be what they are today, I just, I just wouldn't start the loose NES set. It's just, uh, I'll collect something else. But... Most of my like really painful purchases are not those set things. It, it would be uh, Outback Joey was another really stupid one I bought. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't rebuy Outback Joey at the price I paid for it. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I do enjoy maybe. Outback Joey. I think it is a very interesting part of the maybe Sega Genesis set. But like, come on, fucking on. <laughs> I mean, like if there, if we were looking at all the things I just wouldn't buy if we were starting over there, it, it's too much to list. All right. It, I think anything I bought that is like I bought it because I love it or that it's like a Nintendo game, interesting franchise thing, I would still buy even at the inflated prices today. But when it comes to like the Outback Joey's and Little Samson's, even Little Samson, like a game that I love, like I wouldn't buy them at today's prices. Maybe I would. I don't know. I'm crazy, but. Uh, That's the problem. You're crazy. Yeah, I know I'm crazy, but it's uh, the price history. When you ask a question like this, it's impossible not to remember the price history. Because like the fact that I bought something for you know fifty bucks, it was fucking sculptor's cut, fucking sculptor's cut. Johnny, I spent like two hundred fifty dollars on my copy of sculptor's cut. I would not spend eleven hundred dollars on a cartridge oh, yeah, of sculptor's what? cut. Um, but but like is that but if I had two hundred and ninety five and sixty four games would I spend a thousand dollars on a copy of Sculptor's Cut if I like yeah. had the money like I don't know would it drive me that nuts Yes, it, like it probably would. Like that's the reason Sculptor's Cut's a thousand dollar game, which makes no sense because again, like shouldn't Monaco Grand Prix if people if it's just based on the availability shouldn't just as many people need Monaco Grand Prix to complete their set? I don't know. One hundred percent. All right, we got any more? Um, Dork Overlord asks, if you could erase one video game system from history, which would it be? Oof. That's an interesting... What What would have the biggest impact, Johnny? Hmm. I what? mean, we can't... It can't be one that went up head-to-head with something else. Like NES, Genesis, and like... Uh, like N64, PlayStation, because like they, they needed each other to become as great as they were. Um, like, and you need Atari to make Nintendo. Let's see. It's like the Dreamcast, the answer, just because, like, why? Oh, you know, we, we, we could actually, speaking of Sega, we can, um, we can improve history. We don't have to erase any history. Uh, so it could be the 32X because oh, it yeah, yeah, dampened yeah, yeah. the Saturn, or we could just get rid of the Saturn and have like Sega go directly to Dreamcast. Maybe that does something for them. The correct answer is probably the 32X if we can do that, because that yeah, might actually yeah. improve Sega's history. Yeah, I agree. Okay, perfect. Yeah, like if you can get them off of that, like, or and maybe even the answer is that and Sega CD as much as I oh, like yeah, Sega absolutely. CD. If we could do both. Like, I love the Sega CD, yeah. but in terms of how well Sega was able to go into the next generation, it definitely hurt their yeah. chances. But also, like, maybe Saturn, because then they would have just improved their Dreamcast, like, you know, thought more on that and then made it more competitive. Yeah. Uh, yeah the U.S. Saturn launch really fucked up Sega in a lot of ways, both leading up to it and plowing through it. Uh, yeah. So we could Daddy probably Mo, try to please send that. in your corrections. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good. Yeah. All right. 
We did it. Collector's questions. Now, Tyler, I, I know this is the part you've really been waiting to get to for three hours. <laughs> Please tell me what you were buying and what you were playing. Uh, Johnny, I'm playing an indie game called Nessess. No it's... one cares about what you're playing. Just tell me the thing you bought. <laughs> Johnny, I got the best thing. I got Famicom Golf Champions Course, which by like a factor of four is the most expensive game I have ever purchased. If anyone listening to this podcast has ever heard of it, let me know. It's pretty cool. You did it. it. You've wanted it for a long time. Johnny, I didn't even want it. I didn't think I could ever own it. So I made, when I started seriously collecting Japanese games, like I've collected Japanese games, but I got like pretty into it three years ago, maybe four years ago. Um, I made a list of just like, I was researching like what's available in Japan, especially for, you know, like Famicom, Famicom, Disk System, Super Famicom. And what are like the rarest things? What are the most interesting things? What are the cool variants? Any price, like just like, what are the cool things that are out there? So I could just like know what to look for. And then I ranked them because on the show, we were really hyping up, like going for your goals. So I'm like, all right, let me make a, a goal list for Japan. And like, if some of this stuff ends up being like, there's eight copies on planet earth or it's $10,000. Like, you know, I'm, I don't have to get all of them. I just want to know what the best things are, you know, so I can change my ranking of them in the future. Number one on this list, Johnny, like the coolest thing I think it is possible to own from Japan, which is crazy, weird thing to say. Uh, it, all right. Oh, let me, let me rephrase. I think like maybe the coolest thing to own from Japan is just like, a first print copy of Famicom Disk System Zelda for 40 bucks. So like, this is not the coolest thing to own from just like a, you should buy it sense. But in terms of the rarities, Famicom Golf Champions course, Johnny. Johnny, spring 1987. As far as I know, Nintendo held their first ever game competition. And it was for Famicom Golf Japan course on the Famicom Disk Systems. They set up fax stations around Japan in game stores. So you would bring your disc with your high score on it to the game store. And these stations would fax your score to Nintendo. And just for entering a score, they, uh, they had like five or 10,000 gold discs of the game printed, uh, in these little disc coon plastic cases. So the, the Famicom mascot is disc coon. He's a little yellow, little yellow dude <laughs> you've seen him you've yes seen him and so as a random prize you could think of these as like uh not nwc gold because there's only 26 of those obviously but uh you know as a random prize you might get this like special copy of the game like thank you for competing you're so cool here's a here's a rare copy of the game even that i think is really cool because this is nintendo's first competition we're talking three years before nintendo world championships and this was one of the prizes but the top prize for this contest, the top 100 uh, low scores in uh, Famicom Golf Japan course, they got a they got Famicom Golf Champions course. So it's a unique game. So it's, it's, it's the same game as Famicom Golf Japan course, but it's an entirely unique course that's very stupid hard. Uh, and so each copy... It comes in a plaque that was personalized and says the player's rank on it. And then the game disc, like the actual code in the game was personalized to say their name in it. But this is pretty cool. It's a Nintendo game and they only made a hundred copies of it. So depending on your definition and how much you stretch things, it's the rarest Nintendo game. And it's also a Mario game because this isn't the US version of golf. Famicom Golf is its own game. This isn't Osan, uh, who's the player in in Japanese, the Japanese version of just golf. Famicom Golf specifically has Mario, so it's also the rarest Mario game. Now, also very cool. Uh, you could argue that it's just a variant of Famicom Golf Japan Course, which I'm totally fine to accept. It that basically would turn it into like stadium events. It's just like a very, a very very hard to find version of a thing that already exists. Um, but if it's not, I mean, it's like the closest thing to a Nintendo World Championships of Japan that I think you could get. You know what's funny about that argument though, like the statement, like we talked about it at length, but 
it's funny that people will argue that how much rarer a 9.8 is than a 9.6 or a 10 oh, over shit. a 9.8. But but this thing that is like a wholly different medium, uh, you know, or has more content, and they're like, oh, it's basically the same. It's like, uh, okay. <laughs> Dude, uh, yeah, you know, mine, mine's like a, it's like a, it's a good 8.0. Uh, um, okay. Oh, so well, who cares then? The the even crazier part about this to me, Johnny. So this comes, it, it comes in a wooden case with like a felt interior and it's got like a plaque on one side and the Famicom disc on the other side. And it came in a fucking cardboard box. And the version I bought has the fucking cardboard box for like this lesser, a lot of the, the lesser prizes also came in, in similar cardboard boxes. 95% of them are missing the cardboard box. And fuck, I got the best thing and it has the outer box. God, Johnny, this is the fucking coolest thing. I I won. I am the greatest video game collector that has ever lived. I fucking got it, Johnny. <laughs> you you did. You got it. You did it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure this isn't dumped anywhere, so I'm I'm going to get it dumped and uh Maybe that finds its way into archive.org. I don't know. That would be uh, copyright infringing. So I, I legally, I, of course, I couldn't do that. But I mean, it, somehow it might find its way onto archive.org. So, I mean, in there, I missed my joke of, uh, you know, you should post a picture on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's so funny because all the people, like all my friends who are like, holy shit, like, yeah, this is awesome. Uh, are like, oh man, yeah, you, you should post that on Video Game Sage and get eight people who are like, oh yeah, that's cool. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah that's, a, that's exactly what I did. <laughs> and then, like, and I posted it on Instagram, like, no one knows what the fuck this is. I wrote like a little write up on this on Video Game Sage because I'm so excited that I got it, obviously. Uh, it, like, it's probably the only English write up on it on like the entire internet. Like, I think maybe there's like a mention of this on Famicom World, but there's no picture of it because it's like, it's really hard to even find a picture of this thing. Uh, you did it. I fucking did it, Johnny. I don't know. Now that the next coolest thing, like now, now, now that my list, I've knocked off the top of the list. Uh, next coolest thing is Gold Rockman Four. So, Rockman Four. You know, we're gonna just talk about this next episode. That's that's a teaser for next episode. Next episode, we're gonna talk about Famicom rarities. Uh, okay. We're gonna do a Famicom rarity primer, and it's not gonna be like this crazy like one out of a hundred bullshit that you can't actually get. Like we're gonna talk about like some lower priced promotional stuff. That you actually like, you can get, and that's that's cool and interesting. So, I would call this like the Nintendo World Championships of Japan because like it's Nintendo's first contest, and this was the top prize. And it's a unique game. Like it's it's very similar. The thing is, Japan has so many more very rare promotional games and competition cartridges and things like that. Like NWC is NWC because it's like the one thing you've got NWC. You know, there's a hundred. Uh, how many copies are there that actually exist? One or two hundred. And then Somehow. you have the Campus Challenge cartridges and Power Fest, and there's like fucking two of those. So like, yep. th there's this huge gap. But then Japan has all this stuff in the middle. Like there, there are a hundred copies of this golf, and there's like I've got another Famicom competition cartridge that's like a one of sixteen, and this Mega Man's like a one of eight. They've got like all this little stuff all over the place. So uh, next episode, we're gonna talk about some of that kind of stuff. Excellent. Yeah, I look forward to not being able to help you write show notes. <laughs> sure yes <laughs> um oh johnny there's a really uh really cool story about how uh how i came across uh this copy of famicom golf championship course um how i was able to find uh such a cool and unique item okay uh, i came up for sale on yahoo auctions and i spent fucking all my money on it that's the story <laughs> well that's the story um how many did how many people did you have to fight zero Okay, oh. so here's here's the the full story of bidding on this. This actually came up for sale. A different copy came up for sale a couple of years ago that didn't have the outer box, and I bid. I like uh, like you got to like international wire transfer money to Japan to like bid on like this really high ticket items and stuff. I I put so much money in Japan and I lost. There were three of us bidding on it, and it went for more than a little bit more than I paid for this one. And that one didn't have the outer box. Uh, and then this one came up and it, this is this was one of those listings that was like it was a guy. He had like four or five things for sale, like all this super high end stuff. And he put like the fuck you price on it of like, OK, if someone's really going to bid this, you can fucking bid this. And yeah, Johnny, I went, I fucking bid it. And I was the only one who bid on it. And it went for in U.S. dollars. It was less than the one I bid on a couple years ago. So 
It, I mean, it was about the same, but uh, I think it was more in yen, but less in U.S. dollars because the yen has fallen a bunch. Well, um, I'm very happy you got it. I know you were very excited and you yes. <laughs> did some wavering whether you were gonna, even going to bid and how would you win? And you it all worked out. Yeah, I mean, the problem was I saw it. It was like two days before the auction ended. And I didn't know if I could move money to Japan fast enough to bid on it because like an auction company isn't going to let you bid thousands of dollars like without having the money in your account because they have to go buy the thing for you. Um, And yeah, I, I'm not rich. What happened? Actually, the reason I was able to even afford this in the first place, Johnny, is I found an old Dogecoin I wallet. <laughs> Uh, so a few months, like a couple months ago, I found a, I was involved in Dogecoin when it was like purely a meme on Reddit. And I just have like all these like random Dogecoin wallets that have like lost into my backups. And I found a Dogecoin wallet with like a little bit of money in it, like a joke amount of money in it that was worth like a thousand times what I paid for it. <laughs> and so it's like, okay, well, I guess I can afford this crazy thing now. Excellent. Good job, past you. Yep. All right. Uh, All right. I don't. Know, I probably bought something else, but who cares? I got. I got the best thing. I won video game collecting. I'm on you top. You did. You. You win. You know what the best thing, Johnny? I'm not on social media anymore, so I don't need everybody to like this. I could just talk about it with you and brag to all my friends, uh, because. Because, you know, it would be demoralizing to get 78 likes on Instagram for this. <laughs> for this, yeah. You're like, you, well, it would just illustrate how little people understand and you would just be sad forever. I mean, it's not that no one understands. It's like no one knows it exists. It's like, it's, it's not their fault that they don't care about it. It's just that no one cares about it. True. But I could be really um, happy for, but Johnny, I could be really happy for myself because I collect for myself. All right. I think I've bragged about my thing enough. Um. You did it. I did That's it. great. You rarely get to go on like this, and it was such a big purchase. You should. It was. Um, you, you know, this is... So, people might have heard me go on about, like, Yoshi no Cookie, Kurapon to Cookie, or whatever, which is another game I paid, like, a stupid amount of money for. Not nearly as much as this. This is way cooler than that stupid Yoshi Cookie game that came with a microwave. Let me just say that. This is a contest prize personalized, unique Nintendo game that there's only a hundred of. All right. Okay. Uh, Johnny, you get like a, a Game Boy Color game or something? <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, I, I got some of those. Yeah, you got something, you got some bullshit to talk about after I just <gasps> told you about this super awesome thing I just bought? Uh, why, yes, I do, Tyler. Hey, let me tell you about some stuff I bought. Okay? Just All right. real quickly. Hey, uh, remember Limbo with the 3D glasses? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, got that. Oh, nice. quick correction to the 3D episode. Uh, we incorrectly said that uh, uh, what Cranium Kaboom came with 3D glasses. Those are just decoder glasses. So that episode is now not 3D glasses. It's now the episode about games that came with paper glasses. Okay, yes. We did it. Excellent. Uh, well, that's not we true because Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy came with the uh, the paper glasses too. Yeah. All right. All right. Anyways, um, I bought that Limbo, so that was cool. Uh, I also, and tell me if you've heard of this one, Douglas Adams Starship Titanic. Oh my god, Johnny! I mean, you care about that, so sure. I'm, I'm I, into that. I do. I set I, up a save search for that limbo, by the way. There's a sealed one for $80. I'm not spending $80 on that. No, I spent 30 and it wasn't yeah. sealed, though. I'll spend 30 and I, Yeah, well, it's like, fine. I think if you wait, you can find it. Hey, here's another dumb thing, and maybe related to an episode. I bought Disney Tokyo Sea for the GBA. It's, uh, this is a Japanese exclusive. And um, for some reason, it sometimes comes up as... I, I don't understand why. Sometimes it comes up as $50 or $30... And sometimes it comes up for like 150 And I don't know if the, like, they'll look like the same version to me. Maybe I'm missing something or this person priced it wrong. I don't know, but I, I bought it and I bought it when it was $30. But if you go look at Disney Tokyo Sea, um, it's actually. It's Tokyo Disney uh, Sea, by the way. It, it Actually, it's Adventure of Tokyo Disney Sea. Oh, okay. If you, yeah, yeah. you want to get fucking right, um, if we're going to be pedantic about it then yeah um yeah I, I bought that and i bought hey because you know 
I, w- I started thinking about Halloween games, and while I was looking at Limbo stuff, there's a dual pack of Limbo and Inside for the PS4, and I got that too. And then um, I got... You should uh, get the Inside that comes with the... the uh, should, I, should I spoil it? Is Inside, like, spoilable now? It comes with the, the squishy monster ball. <laughs> oh, I didn't know there was a version that came like that. So they... Uh, it was one of the. It might be limited run games, but one of the limited run uh, companies they teased that they were making a limited edition of Inside, and it came with um, it came with something from uh, the, with the sex doll company, Real Doll. So they had oh, yeah. uh, Real Doll make the monster at the end of the game in like their flesh material, which is, I mean, oh, that's, that's kind of horrific and wonderful. It is really horrific. Horrific and wonderful, yeah, I love yeah. it. Um, um, okay, I like Inside more than Limbo. Uh, I think Inside is also probably overrated because I think all of those platformers, those like story platformers, it's just not my genre. But all right, Inside's uh, really cool. M- Meat Boy, uh, overrated, underrated. <laughs> Meat Boy is perfect. Love some Meat okay. Boy. What about Braid? Braid is what Braid's amazing. Jonathan Blow is a genius. Jonathan Blow fucking gets it, Johnny. He knows how to make a video game. And Braid has a story. Braid is a story platform, but it's also like 100% novel gameplay. Never repeats a concept. It's got secrets. Braid's perfect. And you know, and you know, it's the game that like entirely broke indie games onto the main mainstream. Braid, go buy Braid. It's so underrated. The PC release of Braid, Braid was only released as a budget PC game. You can get a sealed copy of Braid for ten dollars. It's the only physical release. Go get a copy of Braid. All right, go ahead. Yeah, there you go. Um, and I, I got some. I got I got some Game Boy games. You know, kind of like a FIFA World Cup, and I got. Ghostbusters variant. Is that exciting? You say that so week. dismissively, but I feel like a Game Boy no, FIFA game is probably like an exciting thing. Yeah, it's world. It's, well, it's World Cup too, so that's exciting. And I got Ghostbusters one that I'm really excited about. Man, I, I got so many exciting things. Thanks, uh, thanks, Mr. CIB. He helped me out. That's how I got that. So cool. So. You know what's crazy about Mr. CIB? OG CIB even. Uh, Mr. Sib, to, to those who knows, to know, to those of us who know yeah. him well, yeah. Uh, when you have every Nintendo game, uh, everything you get from that point on is a double. So he must have a bunch of doubles. I, you know, I don't know. I cannot tell you tells about this man. I just appreciated the help. Um, oh, and Mr. I CIB, a, uh, and owner uh, of Stadium yeah, Events, Johnny, a game that we you, trashed as garbage this episode. You, um, you also forgot to mention that you got uh, eighty-eight Antarctica. <laughs> sure, yes, uh, I, I got a copy of eighty-eight Antarctica, the stupid limited rare games release. Yep. Uh, you know, I just when those come up, I use it's usually uh, VG Collectaholic that tips me off to them because I don't pay attention to this stuff. But if he's like, "Oh, there's a limited rare game release," I'm like, yeah, "You know what? If I want to sell it, I'll probably get double my money." So, like, whatever. I just clicked yes and I bought 80 Antarctica for PS4. All right. That's you. A, uh, you went that... crazy. You bought like six copies. Like I really, they do this whole meme thing where they're like, "If you buy a shitload of these copies, maybe you'll get the exciting one, you stupid collector." And you actually did it. I, I did. You're not even a PS4 collector. <laughs> I, I I did buy it, and <sighs> I got the I got the dumb one. What I is going the on? The, so the the FOMO cover variant sells for like a hundred and fifty dollars, two hundred dollars even. I don't know. I have no idea. I, what is wrong with so people? the initial the initial idea is um I bought one and uh one, one is for Mr. CIB. That's it. Remember that, Johnny. You have to send that to him. Uh, I was buying one for you, but then you went and bought one because I was going to be like, oh, Tyler doesn't take enough from the show, so let me buy something that I can send him. And, uh, and then you were like, nah, I already bought it. You're like, that's so stupid. I bought it. Um, yeah. Like, okay. It is stupid, though. Uh, it is stupid. I agree. Um, and then I was like, okay, and then I'll have like two left over and I can just like do whatever. So, uh, there was a reason. I was like, oh, I could keep one of both covers if I want. And then there's only actually one extra. So, you know, there there's reasons. There's reasons, Tyler. All right. They're not great reasons, but they are reasons. Uh, so, actually, I don't... 
I didn't know this. Someone brought it up recently in Discord. Limited Rare Games is supposedly not the same company that started with Poop Slinger. So Poop Slinger was released. Whatever. It's a big joke. Everyone thinks it's a limited run games thing. And then apparently Limited Rare Games is another company that bought their domain and started releasing games. I don't... This seems like part of, like, the lore of Limited Rare Games. Like, they're trying to make it this funny thing. Um, but if there are two different companies that release games under the name Limited Rare Games, that I think makes it better. I think that's good for the story of Poop Slinger. Oh, we didn't even talk about Poop Slinger in terms of being overrated. Who knows what Poop Slinger is no. worth now? Um, but I do enjoy the lore of limited rare games being the stupid company that releases games for FOMO game collectors. Love it. Love that it exists. Hilarious. Yeah. Uh, let's check on a uh, poop slinger. There are five sealed copies on eBay topping out at $20,000 for a VGA 90. Go get your poop slinger guys. They only made 84 of them. Definitely. Yeah. Um, any of the boxes or the shipping envelopes still available? Yeah. Okay. So there's one copy with the bubble mailer for a cool $10,000. Um, but yeah, you can get the bubble mailer for $400, Johnny. If this game is worth 6000 whatever sealed poop slinger is worth. Like, yeah, go spend $400 in the bubble mailer, you idiot. Because... The whole point is that it's this it's like a fake collectible. It's like it like limited rare games. It's a meme company. It's the Dogecoin of video games. It's literally the Dogecoin of video games in that it's a joke, but it's still worth a lot of money even though it's a joke. So yes, go spend four hundred dollars in the fucking bubble mailer and complete the joke, Johnny. Just do it. If you have a poop slinger, I know you guys are listening to this show. I know like multiple people who listen to this show who have poop slingers. Go buy that four hundred dollar bubble mailer. You deserve it. <laughs> You do deserve it. All right. You did it, Tyler. That's right. the show. All right. That's the show. Hey, Tyler, wh sure. where can they find you on social media? Never mind. Um, <laughs> well, you, you can, can find Tyler. Discord. Discord's still, you know, creepy big brother, big tech social media. Yeah. You can um, only I, find I Tyler on, on I might our be Discord. default gen now. I don't know if I have the stupid numbers anymore. Oh, yeah. Whatever Discord, however. Yeah, they just changed everything. I am now jo I'm Johnny Versus on, on Discord. Um, what, was there another just Johnny? Ayuchi? Uh, yeah, I think I'm Johnny Versus. I think that's what it said. And I was like, sure. Yeah, you are. I couldn't just why aren't you? Oh, man. It wouldn't let me be Johnny. So. And I didn't want to just be Johnny Ayuchi. So. I don't know. Okay. Inconsistent. Um, anyways. If you want to find me, you can find me on our Discord. You can find me on Instagram. Johnny underscore Ayuchi or Johnny Versus on, on, um, on Discord. And you can find Tyler as Default Gen. So that's where find us uh if you want to get to our discord though and talk to all of our cool people who know all of these amazing facts you can join us by going to patreon.com slash collectors quest and you can join for as little as two dollars that gets you into the discord four dollars gets you the after dark stuff so um yeah if you're interested in that go ahead and do it if not don't worry about it all right that's it for the show hey tower thanks so much for joining me and everybody thank you so much for listening we appreciate it and uh i hope I hope your days are totally properly rated from here to the next episode. All right. Bye.